Good afternoon and welcome to Baysmore Hyder Stadium in beautiful Valdosta, Georgia, where we have today's matchup between the homestanding Valdosta State Blazers and the visiting Tigers from Edward Waters University. Hi, I'm Stephen Batard and joined with me today is Trey Williams. And when we look at the GSC standings, we see that Valdosta State is sitting at number three. What do we have here, Trey? Yeah, so far we have North Alabama at number one. They're undefeated on the season, so they've already clinched the GSC. And number two, Arkansas Tech, and they can make the playoffs as long as they win their game today. And as you said, VSU is in that predicted three spot that we had at the preseason coming into this year. So we're not looking at playoff implications for either team today. So we're going to go ahead and look at the starting lineups for today. First on offense. At the X receiver, replacing Cedric Jones on the day will be senior number one Cedric Evans. At the Y receiver is number 19 Gerald Ford, the freshman from Harvey, Louisiana. At the Z receiver is R.J. Bastone, the senior from Swanee, Georgia. Left tackle will be Jesus Torres, number 58, the junior. Over at left guard, we got Garrett Grady, number 61, the senior. At the center spot, we got Edward Gregory, the uh, senior from Fairburn, Georgia. At right guard, we got Kyle Fox, number 74, the junior. Over at right tackle, we've got Britt Wilson, number 69, the junior from Tifton, Georgia. At the quarterback position, we've got the transfer from Indiana University, Kellen Lewis. At the running back spot, Eric Sledge, number four, the senior. And fullback will be Donnie Powell, the senior out of Ocala, Florida. Now we're going to take a look at the defense, Trey. All right, starting the defensive event, we have the Valdosta native number 50, Kier Moore. At defensive tackle, we have the pit transfer, Tommy Duhart. The big man in the middle there is going to be Josh Stevens, starting that nose tackle. At the other defensive end spot, we have number 97, Melvin Black. At number 36, Sean Weathers will be starting that outside linebacker. We have Demarcus Flanagan holding down the middle linebacker position. Junior Ratu Bella will be starting at the other outside linebacker. Number 29, Devin Cannon will be patrolling the field at the right cornerback position. True freshman will see the start at um, true freshman Matt Pierce will see the start at free safety today. Starting at strong safety, number seven, Josh Wiley. And starting at the left cornerback position, veteran leader number 24, Carlos Anderson. All right, and that's how the defense is going to line up. Now let's take a look at special teams. Uh, doing the kicking today will be Daniel Anderson. He's the freshman. Uh, punting the ball today will be Jack Fulford, the freshman out of Waycross, Georgia. Returning the kickoffs is Isaiah Jupiter. He's a sophomore all the way from New Orleans, Louisiana. And returning the punts is Chris Welburn, the sophomore from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Well, we thank you for tuning in to VSU TV, and we hope that you'll join us back here next when we bring you the kickoff. Someday, I'll be a ballerina, just like them. And this will be my stage, where I twirl and float and swirl. Someday, this won't just be my wish. Someday, I won't be sick. Salam. Yeah. Salam. Hey, what? Hey there. Fire bar. Fire bar. Me. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. You can protect yourself from the flu by taking a few simple steps. First, cover your mouth and nose when sneezing or coughing, and encourage those around you to do the same. Next, wash your hands often with soap and water. And most importantly, get a flu shot. If you want to do business with Social Security but don't want to visit an office, you can go online to socialsecurity.gov. Take some precautions during this flu season. Go online. Welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium and today's coverage of the game brought to you by VSU TV. Valdosta State won the coin toss and deferred to the second half. So number 89, Daniel Anderson, will be kicking off right to left to start off the game. Back to receive the kick will be Jonathan Johnson and Anthony Wallace. And Anderson lines up as he gets ready to kick off. And we are underway here. Kick 
Kickoff's going to be caught at about the 12-yard line, takes it up to the 20, across the 25, breaks through to the 30, the 35, and brought down at about the 39-yard line where the Edward Waters offense will take over, first and 10. And that was a nice run by the Edward Waters special team to bring it back out to the 40. With the return for the senior day here at the ballpark as the seniors were honored beforehand. And this senior class, Trey, uh, the winningest class in Valdosta State history, most of which have two national championship rings in their tenure here. It's, this is a very special team here that the Blazers have. It's going to be very sad to see these teams go since they brought so much success to the Blazer organization. But uh, that's where you have to do a pretty good job of recruiting and bring some guys in that can fill those voids. And it looks like they're going to shift to a wildcat formation as quarterback splits off the right snap, run up the middle, taken down across the 40 at about the 42-yard line, gain of about two on the play. And that was a pretty nice run. Even though it didn't go that far, they still might have been able to catch the Blazers off guard a little bit, but they were able to keep it contained and not let it go for too many yards. And it's going to be about second down and seven to go. Looks like they're lined up in the Wildcat formation again. Snap, run up the middle, but stop. Gain of about one, maybe two on the play. Not much going. It's going to be about third and five. Wilborn once again with all carries. Yeah, that was number seven, Cesare Wilborn taking a direct snap from under center. Well, not under center, but taking a direct snap. And we'll see if... Brandon Turman will line up as center as quarterback this time as they've gone to two straight wildcat formations. And there's and a flag, there's on, a the flag on the play. I know this team's strong seat so tends to be their defense. So far their offense hasn't been able to do much this year. Uh, the, the Tigers offense has only been putting up 12.6 points per game so I expect the Blazers defense to come out and have a pretty good day here at Bayesmore Hyder. And the Blazer defense has been eaten up through the air all year. There is no penalty on the play, so it will be third and five. Quarterback is Brandon Turman, number 13, not starter Caesar, Caesar e. Wilborn. And receiver number 28 lined up on the right side. Shotgun formation. Takes a snap, looking over the right. A little bit of pressure. Looks like setting up a screen, but read by the defense beautifully and taken down for a one-yard gain. And that tackle was by number 56, Joseph Stevens. Pretty good defensive uh, series to start off the game. Yeah, right? as you can see here, he drops back trying to set up the screen play, but the Blazers just a little too quick for that. They went ahead and made the tackle quickly to prevent them from getting any yards. And they'll be lined up the punt on fourth and four. And the punt, not very long, low. Looks like they'll let it bounce. Oh, he picks it up, and he's going to get hit and dropped immediately. And that's where the Blazers will take over first and ten. Fans, catch a David Dean show on VSU TV every Monday at 9 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. Check TV Guide listings for other airings of the David Dean show here on VSU TV. Well, so far, the Blazers are staying true to what they've been known for after all these years, which is pretty good defense. They were able to get Edward Wars to go three and out there on that first possession, and now we're going to see what this Blazer offense can do out here on the field today. And they will take over first and 10 from about the 13-yard line. And Kellen Lewis in the shotgun formation. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Snap, he's going to throw a quick pass over to the side and stumbles and loses his balance, and he's going to lose about a yard on the play. And that's going to bring up second and 11. And, and that was just a quick pass from Kellen Lewis trying to see if he could set the screen up for Cedric Evans there, but he wasn't able to let him set the play up completely before he got rid of the ball. Pass threw him off a little bit as he wasn't able to keep his feet. Shotgun formation, Kellen Lewis. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near as he takes a snap, and he's going to swing it out to Eric Sledge, his running back. He's going to break a few tackles and brought down. There's a flag on the play as he was brought down by number 11, Denton Thomas. And we'll catch a flag thrown in the area of possibly a holding or a face mask. We'll have to catch what it was. And it was a face mask, personal foul. 
And that'll move the Blazers up 15 yards. And that's going to bring them up all the way up to the 31-yard line. First and 10, the Blazers will set it up again. Kellen Lewis in the shotgun formation. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. And Stephen, and excuse me, David Arnold is lined up to his right at the running back position. Lewis takes a snap, fake handoff, play action, looking all kinds of time. Throws down the middle deep. He's got a man caught by number one, Tr Cedric Evans, as he's brought down all the way to the 10-yard line. And that was a spectacular play by the Blazers. The offensive line was able to give Kellen Lewis the time he needed to stand back in the pocket and find his man open downfield, and he was able to connect with him for the big play. Yes, he was. Key there, he had all kinds of time to throw and find that receiver, and a fine catch by Cedric Evans, who, by the way, is replacing Cedric Jones on the day, who is currently not dressed on the sideline. Okay, Kellen Lewis in the shotgun. Handoff up the middle to David Arnold. He's going to break a tackle and get all the way down to the five-yard line where it will be second down just outside the 10. So they'll have to get just inside the one for a first down. And so far the Blazers are doing a pretty good job of spreading the ball around there. So far I've seen them do a couple of pass plays, and I've also seen them do a couple of runs and set the screen up a couple of times. So they're doing a lot of things, showing the, the Tigers a couple of their offensive schemes and formations, trying to get them off balance. And in their usual no huddle. Shotgun formation, David Arnold lined up to his right and Donnie Powell to his left. He'll take the snap, handoff off the middle, and it's going to be a gain of about one, maybe two, and it's going to be third down. Well, if anybody can go ahead and pound the ball into the end zone right down here in, in the short yardage situation, I'm pretty sure either, either be David or Arnold that might throw in number four Eric Sledge to try to go ahead and put it in the end zone. And you can't forget that Kellen Lewis can make plays with his legs, so he, he's always able to improvise and find a way into the end zone as he's done several times this year. Kellen Lewis underneath center and in motion, handoff off the middle. He fumbled the ball, and Edward Waters picks it up. They're running across the 10 to the 20. Got one man to beat. Kellen Lewis is the only one standing in his way from the end zone, and he will make the tackle as he crosses midfield. And that's going to – there's a flag on the play. That was Rodney Lay who picked up the fumble on the play. Let's see what the penalty is. Probably – Looks like it's going to be a personal foul penalty. And we'll see right there as Rodney Lay just picks it up. It looked like a bad exchange from Eric Sledge and Kellen Lewis on the play, and Rodney Lay was just right there to be able to pick it up and take it across the 50, all the way into Blazer territory. And it was a personal foul. And Brandon Turman will be under center as Edwards Water, Edward Waters' offense takes over at the 30-yard line. Snap, handoff up the middle, finds a little seam, breaks through, and gets all the way across the 20, down to almost the 15-yard line. Tackle made by Josh Wiley on the play. And a good little run there, Trey. Yeah, this is what the Blazers tend to do. They tend to make something good happen when they turn the ball over, or get the ball back, rather, for their offense. But then they tend to either have a penalty or something happens as far as a fumble or they throw an interception, and then they put themselves in situations like we're seeing right here where Edwards Waters is threatening to get a touchdown. And Truman underneath, snap, handoff up the middle again. Breaks through the initial line, fighting off tacklers, and gang tackle finally outside the 10 at about the 12-yard line. And if the Blazers are gonna get a stop here, they're gonna have to start wrapping up those tackles. If you let a man, if you have a man running up the middle, and all you're gonna do is try to arm tackle, I'm pretty sure he have enough leg strength to just walk right through that tackle. Have you seen him do a couple of times here on this drive? And yeah, it's gonna bring up second down. Call it about six. And Terman will be in the shotgun formation, three to the far side. He's gonna take the handoff himself, but no room as he's brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Uh, tackle made by Ratu Rab Rabelo. Ratu Rabella. And so far, right now we have nine minutes and 28 seconds left here in the first quarter. It's three and five for the Tigers. Let's see what they dial up here to try to see if they can get the first down. And it is a big first down, third down, excuse me. 
as Brandon Turman will be in the shotgun formation. And to his right will be Javari Liggins. And two receivers to the far side, two to the near. Quick pass over the middle tunnel screen. And he's going to be brought down at about the five. But he will have enough for a first down. It's going to be first and goal for the Blazers. Tackle made by Demarcus Flanagan. And that was a nice screen used by the Tigers. As you can see here, the screen was able to get number five, Jonathan Hansen, open to pick up the first down and put Edward Waters in a pretty good position here to go ahead and get the first touchdown. Single set back as Turman's underneath. He's going to hand off of the middle juke move, and he's going to gain about two yards on the play, but that's about it as the Blazers met him at about the three-yard line. And that's going to bring up second and goal. So far to this year, the Blazers have been pretty good in goal line situations where they tend to prevent the other team from scoring and just go get a field goal. Let's see if they, the Blazers can stand two to that bend but don't break defense here. And the Tigers are going with a no huddle style of offense here, getting the play from the sideline. And Turman will be in the shotgun again with number 28, Javari Liggins to his right. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. I wouldn't be surprised if he just takes this one and runs with it because he has the ability to do that. The snap, drops back to pass, looking. He's going to fire to the end zone, but nobody's there. Looks like he was expecting the receiver to do an out, and he ran an in, and he just threw it behind him. The coverage on the play was by number 24, Carlos Anderson, and that's going to bring up third and goal. And that's what you expect to see from your senior cornerbacks to make the plays out there in defense and to prevent this Edward Waters offense from getting in the end zone. And we got eight minutes left in the first quarter as six minutes left in the first quarter. And as Edward Waters will be third and goal to go from the three yard line. Snap, fake play action, rolling to his right, fires and he's got his tight end in the end zone, touchdown Tigers. And that was a nice play action pass right there by the Tigers. They were able to get the Blazers to bite on the run and they were able to get the pass out to the tight end to get the score. As you can see here, Thurman rolls out, finds his tight end and just hits him in stride and he was gets across the line. Touchdown for the Tigers. It looks yeah. as if this game is going to be as easy as the Blazers might have thought it would have been going up against an NAIA team. And on to attempt the extra point is Bertram Balfour. And he misses the extra point. And so the Blazers, or the Tigers rather, are able to capitalize on the turnover and march down the field and score a touchdown. They missed the extra point. So with 7.55 left to go in the first quarter, it's six to nothing Tigers. Well, the Tigers are doing what I'm pretty sure their coaches pretty much planned to do this entire game so far. They're going out and executing. Even though they didn't look as if they were going to do that good coming out of the gates, they might have just had a slow start. But now they seem to be clicking on offense, and the Blazers didn't hurt them any due to the fact that they gave them a penalty to start off that second drive, and they were able to go downfield with seven plays, four for 45 yards, and get the score in two minutes and 30 seconds. And it was a seven play drive, 45 yards. And of course, as we mentioned, the touchdown, but they missed the extra point. We'll have to see if that plays, comes into play later on in the game. Yes, yeah, sometimes the special team plays where you get the little chip shot as far as the extra point can hurt you. And Rodney Grant will be kicking off for the Tigers. And it's not Bertram Balfour in there, it's Rodney Grant. Who's a defensive back who will be actually doing a kickoff here. So you might want to expect some trickery. And it's a little swift kick picked up at the 40. Across the 45 and brought down right there. Picked up. It's number 19, Gerald Ford, who picked up the onside kick or squib kick, whichever you choose to call it, and was able to bring it in, and now the Blazers have possession. And they will take over first and 10 from their own 45, their second drive of the game, as they put together a decent drive last time they had the ball, but they fumbled, as we saw earlier, right on the goal line, knocking on the door to score. And we'll see if they can hold on to the ball this time. 
as Kellen Lewis is in the shotgun. Two receivers to the near side, two to the far. And David Arnold is lined up to his left. First and 10 from the 45 snap. Kellen Lewis lost the snap, and he falls on it at the 40-yard line. And he was lucky to be able to fall on that and not get another turnover early in the game. A second turnover would have been very costly this early in the game. Yeah, that looked like a situation where it looks as if Kellen Lewis might have taken his eye off the ball and it actually just bounced off his chest and hit the ground. But he was able to cop back on it to save the possession for the Blazers. And right now we have 7 minutes and 24 seconds left here in the first quarter in the second and five, no, second and 15 for the Blazers. Shotgun Kellen Lewis takes a snap. Drops back in trouble. He's going to scramble, run up the middle, and he's going to gain. He's going to get back to just across the original line of scrimmage, just outside the 50. And number 11, Denton Thomas, was the tackler on the play, and that's going to bring up third and seven. And no huddle offense. Kellen Lewis in the shotgun. He's going to take the snap, looking, fires across the middle. He's got his receiver, Gerald Ford. Caught and brought down finally right outside the 40-yard line, about about the 42-yard line. And the tackle was made by number 16, John Dukes, and that was actually a nicely, nicely ran route there by Gerald Ford. His defender actually slipped a little while trying to make the tackle, but Gerald Ford had just enough space to make the catch for the Blazers. And it was a good play to pick up the first down and move the chains. Lewis in the shotgun again. He's going to take the snap, drop back, looking to his left. In trouble, he's looking, still looking, fires downfield. He's got a man, and he caught it, and he's going to score. Isaiah Jupiter made a move on the defender, was able to come back inside and make the catch and get the touchdown for the Blazers to put him on the scoreboard. I'll tell you one thing here, Steve. That wasn't the best thrown pass I've seen Kellis Lewis do, but he does what I expect him to do. He uses his legs to extend the play, and he gets out of the pocket, and he finds Isaiah Jupiter, and he just throws it where the wide receiver can make the play on the ball. As you can see, Jupiter goes and gets the ball from the um, this defensive back and just takes it on in the end zone as it falls down. As Lewis has been able to do all season, make plays with his leg improvised as the extra point will be up and good. And with six minutes and 26 seconds left, it's Valdosta State seven and Edward Waters six. Well, I'm pretty sure that drive didn't start the way the Blazers expected. It's just the, the snap was bobbled there by Kellen Lewis, but hey, he did what Kellen Lewis does. He makes plays. And he, he pretty much recovered from that, that bubble snap there. What do you think there? He did, he did. He has two big plays on the day, uh, two long passes. Of course, that last one to Isaiah Jupiter, which led to the touchdown. And on the first drive of the game, they had the long pass that brought him down in close before, right before they had fumbled on the play. The VSU Theater Department proudly presents Damn Yankees, based on the novel by Douglas Wallop. The musical follows Joe Boyd, who makes a deal with the devil, just so his favorite baseball team can win the pennant. Damn Yankees begins on November 12th. Call the box office at 229-333-5973 to purchase tickets. And both teams take the field, getting ready for the kickoff here at Baysmore Hyder. We have six minutes and 26 seconds left here in the first quarter as the Blazers prepare to kick off. Daniel Anderson on the kick for the Blazers. Back to return the kicks will be Jonathan Johnson and Anthony Wallace. As he comes up and kicks off. And the kick is going to be brought down at about, and the fumble just inside the 10. And he's going to improvise and make it up to about the 15. But it looked like they had a little confusion uh, between Jonathan Johnson and Anthony Wallace as they looked like they weren't sure who was going to field the kick. It looks as if both guys are just ready to try to make a return. They can't decide who's going to get it, but when they finally do, they pick it up and they try to get as many yards as they can, but the Blazers special teams was down there already to make the play. And they were able to make something out of nothing, getting about seven yards on that return, where the Tigers will take over on offense, first and 10, just outside their own 15. And Brandon Turman is still the quarterback, as we'll have receiver in motion three to the near side one to the far and he'll send a receiver in motion snap shotgun drops back looking he's going to swing it out to his running back caught at the 10 and brought down immediately gain maybe of one on the play 
And the tackle was made by number 27, Donald Maxwell. And it looks like we might have an injured player on the field. It looks like it might be Donald Maxwell. And that was just a good play there by Brandon Thurman. He seen that he didn't have anything downfield, so he got it to his, wife, his halfback for the pass. And we're going to go to break here on VSU TV with six minutes and six seconds left. Join us back here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. If a chronic illness is driving you apart, call 1-800-344-4867 because a healthy relationship matters. Welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium on VSU TV. And it was Donald Maxwell, the injured player, but they were able to get him off the field. The receiver was brought down on the previous and play. it was no the gain on the play, no so it's going to be second and 10 from their own 16-yard line. And Turman is underneath center. Two receivers to the left, sends one in motion, looks like it's tied in. And handoff up the middle to his back, and he'll break through the initial line, but not much else as he gained about two, maybe three yards on the play. Call it second and about seven. Yeah, the Blazer second defense about was relentless on that play. I've seen several Blazer defenders there to make that tackle to make sure he didn't hit the hole up the middle. Third down and eight on the play. The ball just inside the 20 as the Tigers are looking for the play from the sideline. And as you notice, you've probably seen a lot of Blazers being shuffled in and out of the game, but once again, it is senior day here, so we're trying to get a lot of the skilled players in playing time. Snap. Drops back, fires over the middle, and right through the hands of the defender, number seven, Josh Wiley, who had the interception and went right through his hands. Nevertheless, that's going to bring up fourth down. Good stand by the Blazers as they force the Tigers to punt. Well, I've always heard the difference between a defensive back and a wide receiver is that the wide receiver can catch and a defensive back can't. <laughs> but he did his job. He was able to break up the pass, and now the Blazers will get the ball back. Good coverage on the play. Number six, Rodriguez Owens, who's the linebacker, will be doing the punting. And partially blocked at the line of scrimmage as it's just going to fall at about the 20-yard line. And that's where the Blazers will take over. I'm not sure who got in there and got a hand on it. But it looks like the, the kick was blocked, partially blocked. Football season is ending, but Blazer basketball is right around the corner. The home opener for the Lady Blazers is November the 15th at 2 p.m. versus Lander, and the man tip off on the 16th at 8 p.m. versus Carver. Come support your Blazers at the complex. Admission is free for all students. And it'll be first and 10 for the Blazers in the red zone, just inside their own 20 at about the 17 yard line. Kellen Lewis in the shotgun, two receivers to the near side, one to the far. And Michael Brown lined up to his right as he takes the snap. And it looks like a delayed read, but Kellen Lewis is going to improvise and go over to the sideline and get all the way right outside the 10-yard line. It looks like it might have been a busted play. He might want to hand off to Michael Brown, but it looked like the defense had good pursuit. And as Kellen Lewis always does, he improvises and makes something out of nothing, Trey. Yeah, for a second there, it looked as if Kellen Lewis was just standing there in complete awe because he was confused by what was going on. But then he finally decided, hey, I might need to make a play here before I get tackled. And he does just that, and he picks up a few yards. Yeah, he did that. Michael Brown lined up to the right of Kellen Lewis in the shotgun. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far. Takes the snap, drops back. Looks a fade in the end zone, over through his man. Intended target was Gerald Ford on the play, who's already... And it looks like it w they set up the fade route, but just overthrew his target. Third and three for the Blazers as they look to the sideline and get the play. I'm pretty sure the Blazers just go ahead and try to settle for the first down here. I see David Arnold in the game, so it's a possibility to just try to pound it out on the ground. And Lewis in the shotgun snap. Rollover like quarterback sweep. He's going to get inside the 10 to the 5, and he will pick up the first down. This will be first and goal to go from about the two-yard line. And with about four minutes and 13 seconds left, it'll be first and goal for the Blazers as they're knocking on the door again, Trey. Yeah, and it looks as if the Blazers are just using those big running backs as the scratchers out there as they just line them up next to Kellen Lewis so he can take the snap and take a run for it and see what he can find open down the field. I guess they feel as if he might have better ball carrying vision than some of the halfbacks on the team. And Kellen Lewis underneath, and it looks like an offset eye formation as he draws offsides, and it looks like the defensive lineman came in 
and made contact with the offensive lineman, Denton Thomas. Looks like he was on the false snap there. He just got a little excited there trying to make a play for his team and was drawing offside just a little too early. And that's going to move him up about a foot, Trey, as they're already inside the two-yard line. Yeah, I expect the Blazers to go ahead and get another touchdown here, depending upon if they, whether they can actually get a, a nice handoff here <laughs> within the, the red zone. There have been some snap problems early on in the game. Number six, R.J. Bastone is lined up on the far side receiver as he is the only receiver. First and goal. Snap, toss, sweep over to the right side, and he will get in the end zone as he hit the pylon with his foot. I wasn't able to see if he got the ball over, but apparently, according to that official, he was able to get the ball over the pylon, break the plane, and score a touchdown as that was Michael Brown on the toss sweep. And we'll see him get over here to the right side and get pushed out. And like I said, it looked like his foot kicked the pylon. Wasn't actually able to see if he got the ball over, but nevertheless, official ruled it a touchdown, and it is a touchdown for the Blazers. Well, from the replay I just saw, it looked like the officials had two different ideas on whether it was a touchdown or it was going to be down dead and one. Well, there's no replay, as we know, in Division II college football, so that play was not able to be reviewed. And the Blazers will take a 14-3 lead with just under four minutes to play in the game on the toss sweep to Michael Brown for about a two-yard run and a touchdown. And a good drive once again for the Blazers after the after the uh, the blocked punt. They had good field position. Yeah, it was only took them four plays to go 17 yards in a minute and 10 seconds to get the touchdown. But this is what the Blazers tend to do. If the Blazers could have been able to play at this level all year, then I'm pretty sure the Blazers would be in pretty good position in the GSC. And that's what the fans around Valdosta have come accustomed to the past couple years. And that's what happens when you win two national championships in a matter of four years. Expectations get high, and people expect, expect big things from your football club. Yes, and then that those football clubs tend not to deliver those things. It'll depend on whether you have true sports fans in that town, whether they still get a lot of support from their fans or not. Daniel Anderson on to kick off to the Tigers as we're just under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Jonathan Johnson and Anthony Wallace back to receive the kickoff. They had problems on who was going to get the ball last time. We'll see as the kickoff comes down and it's going to land about the 10-yard line. It is Anthony Wallace. He's going to take it up to the 20, across the 25, to the 30, the 35. And a gang of Valdosta State trying to strip the ball. They'll finally bring him down at about the 40-yard line is about every single player, I think, on the field was in that tackle tray. Yeah, it looks as if the Hepworth Water Special Team was just trying to move the pile up the field and get, pick up a few more yards where the Blazers were settling for the turnover. As you can see here, there's a big hole open right up the middle of the field. And he just takes his time. And as he sees that hole open, he hits it with a little speed there until he's tackled. But it looks as if, once again, you see the Blazers here trying to script the ball loose instead of just make the tackle. And that was Jonathan Hansen on the kick return as the Tigers will come out first and 10 from their own 41-yard line. And it is Terman, the quarterback, as he has two backs lined up each side of him, two receivers to the far side, one to the near. First and 10 as a receiver moves out. And he'll take the snap. Fake handoff to the fullback and gets the running back, but the good pursuit by the defense as we'll bring him back for a loss of about two on the play. And in there on the tackle was number 94, Demetrius Bozeman, among other Blazers, as they were able to get good pursuit, Trey, and get there in the backfield before the running back could break the initial line of scrimmage. And it's been expected of this Blazer defense to play at such a high level all year, but due to injuries, we have had a lot, the Blazers have had a lot of key players go out for the season. Snap, handoff up the middle. A little seam, but not much. He gets past the original line of scrimmage, about to the original line of scrimmage. And a late flag comes in. Looks like we're going to have a personal foul penalty on the play as a little extracurricular activity came in after the play. And that was number 44, Ratu Rebella came in on the tackle there on that play. But Ratu Rebella has played pretty good this season. He's around the third or fourth player on the team in tackles this season after coming in and filling some of those voids that the Blazers had open in the defense due to injuries. 
And it was a personal foul on Demarcus Flanagan on the defense. Looked like a little late hit. And that's going to move the Tigers 15 yards ahead into Blazer territory, where they will be first and 10 from about the 44-yard line with just under three minutes to go in the first quarter. And officials still talking. Following the penalty, the ball. down and 10 at the Mount Austin State 44-yard line. under center. Javari Liggins is lined up in the I formation. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. First and 10 for the Tigers. Snap drops back, quick pass over to the left, and it's a drop ball. Very, very close to a backwards pass, which would have been a live ball for the Blazers, Trey. Yeah, number seven, Josh Waller was there to try to make the tackle, but I guess the wide receiver saw him coming and might have got a little frightened and dropped the pass. Looks like he was looking to run before he caught the ball. Nevertheless, it is a drop pass, second down and 10 from the 44-yard line of the Blazers. Tigers in the I formation again. Two receivers on the far side, one to the near. Terman underneath. And he takes a snap and hands off up the middle to Liggins and not much room. Maybe got past the line of scrimmage, but not much else. So far, besides the second drive here in this game, the Blazers' defense has been looking pretty impressive besides a couple penalties here and there. Tommy Duhart in on the tackle on that one as it's third and 10. They call it no gain on the play and a big third down as the Blazers will make a defensive uh, personnel switch to bring in their third and long special specialist. And Terman in the shotgun snap. A little bit of pressure forced out to his right, and he's just going to have to throw it away as there was just too much pressure there, Trey, and not enough time to find his receivers. He had him before Samuel Charles open on the outside, but if he was able to keep his eyes downfield and maybe set his feet and get a little into the throw, he might have been able to pick up the first down for his team. Pressure by Ratu Rabello in there, and Marcus Nid. And the punt received at the 15 yard line across the 20 to the 25, 30, and brought down at about the 30 yard line as that was Chris Wellborn on the return as the Blazers will take over. Don't forget to watch VSU TV for the latest local, state, and national news on VSU TV News, airing live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. or catch the rebroadcast at 6.30 p.m., 8 p.m., and 10.30 p.m. Blazers are looking pretty impressive on both sides of the ball today here. The offense has been able to move the ball down the field without too many hiccups besides the penalty here and there, and the defense has been able to go out and get three and outs to get the offense the ball back. So far, I'm impressed by what I'm seeing by this Blazers team. And the Blazers will take over first and 10, and just outside their own 30. Kellen Lewis in the shotgun, two receivers to the far side as he takes the handoff. And that was Derek Harris on the handoff, gain of about two on the play. At the beginning of the game, the Blazers had a bunch of their power backs in the game. They started off with Eric Sledge, and then they slowly rotated David Arnold into the lineup. And now I see Mike Brown and Derek Harris with a couple of their speedy backs. I guess the offense a little bit more as the game goes on. Mixing in a variety of running backs in on the offense. Kellen Lewis in the shotgun, Derek Harris to his left. Three receivers to the far side, one in the near as he takes the snap. Drops back all day to throw. Look, wide open across the middle is number 84, Jackson Dean. And tackle made by number 12, Myra Donaldson. And that was a great play by Kellen Lewis, who didn't have a, a Tigers defender anywhere near him for yards. As you can see, he just stands back in the pocket and he's surveying the field until he finds Jackson Dean right over the middle. And he makes the, the pass and it's a completion. And great you made pass. The key point there is he had all day to throw. No huddle offense. Kellen Lewis, no backs, five wide receivers, three to the far side, two to the near. As he's alone in the backfield, takes a snap, looking quick pass right over the middle. It's Jackson Dean again, cross to the 40, turns around, but unable to shake the defender as he gets to about the 40-yard line. Tackle made by number six, by number six, Rodriguez Owens, and number 44, Matt Bates. Gain of about seven on the play, though, call it second and three as we're under a minute to go in the first quarter 
here. 14 to three, Blazers. Second and three. Trips receivers to the far side. And Lewis will take the snap all day to throw again and caught and dropped by backup quarterback Russ Calloway, who's in as a receiver there. And Trey, what, 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 what happened there? It looks as if Kellen, Russ Calloway might have had his eyes on the ball there. Oh, who, hey, maybe the Sun had a little bit of, to play into that. Maybe Russ Calloway, you know, he's a, actually a quarterback. He's not used to playing wide receiver, so hey, who knows? Anything is liable to happen out there. And the Blazers are also trying to change the things up a little bit, give a couple of different looks to this Tigers defense. So let's see what happens. Lewis in the shotgun formation. Harris to his right as he takes the snap. Looking tunnel screen across the middle. That's number six, RJ Bastone. And he gets racked up pretty hard, but nevertheless, he's got the first down. A tackle made by Myron Donaldson on the play. But it's enough for a first down. As we're at 16 seconds to go in the first quarter, Blazers on the move again as they're looking to put together their third scoring drive of the game. And it's 14 to three here. It just looks as if this Tiger defense doesn't have an answer for all these weapons that the Blazers have on offense today. And that spread formation is spreading out the defense, leaving lots of lanes to run. And the offensive line is doing a good job of giving Lewis protection, but we're gonna have a false start penalty. It looked like on the left tackle, number 58. Jesus Torres. And he got a little bit of a head start on the play. Once again, the Blazers start to get a little momentum and get things going offensively and defensively, and then the penalty starts setting in. We'll see how that plays in effect as it moves them back five yards, first and 15 from the Tiger, inside the Tiger, 40-yard line. And it looks like the quarter is going to run out. And at the end of the first quarter, 14 to three, Valdosta State. And we're gonna take a break here on VSU TV. Come back with us and join us at the second quarter here on VSU TV. Valdosta, more than you know. A place where kids dream and kind hearts prevail. In a setting full of recreation and excitement for all ages. A city of vibrant growth, career opportunities, and a thriving business environment. Combined with progressive thinking, it's about exploring your future. Valdosta, Georgia, more than you know. And welcome back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Start of the second quarter, 14 to six Blazers as they are on the move, set by, by a false start penalty where it'll be first and 15 just inside the Tiger 40 yard line. Kellen Lewis in the shotgun, Harris to his right, Three receivers to the far side, snap. Lewis, a little pressure. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to decide to run as he crosses the 35, down to the 30, over to the sideline, and he will run out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. And that was a very nice run by Kellen Lewis. He got, he was, Devin Harris was able to pick up the pressure and give Kellen Lewis a little time back there in the pocket. And I'm pretty sure he saw the same thing I saw. A lot of green in front of him, and he took advantage of it. And he picks up pretty good yardage here on this run. And the Blazers are once again back in the hurry up offense, it looks like. And they've had a lot of success in this style of offense this year. Let's see if they're able to capitalize on that big run there by Kellen Lewis. And that's what coaches and fans alike love about Kellen Lewis is uh, his ability to improvise when there's pressure and there's receivers not open. Shotgun formation, he takes the snap, looking, he's setting up a screen, and he's got number 40, Camilo, Camilo Holloway on the screen. Not much gain on the play as he might have picked up a yard. Cameo Holloway, another one of those Blazers backs that you rarely see since they have so many halfbacks on this team. They're very versatile. The Blazers are able to cycle in a lot of different running backs and wide receivers and keep all these guys fresh as well as the offensive linemen. They have a lot of offensive linemen they like to sub in and out to keep everybody fresh as the season goes on. And I'm pretty sure now they're just trying to get everybody a little bit of playing time as they get ready to go into the postseason to get ready for next year. Derek Harris is back in at the running back spot. Lewis in the shotgun takes the snap, looking to his right, back to his left, over the middle, too low, as he was unable to connect with Jackson Dean, who was coming across the middle, just threw it a little too low. And coverage on the play was by Denton Thomas. And it looks as if Kellen Lewis has all day in the backfield thus far. I haven't seen too many Tiger defenders 
able to get through that Blazer offensive line and put any pressure on Kellen Lewis. I'm surprised he, was, he missed that pass there. If he was able to get that pass to Jackson Dean, that would have been a first down for the Blazers. And when they have brought pressure, Trey, uh, he's been able, Kellen Lewis has been able to just step up and make plays with his legs. Yeah, as he's in the shotgun, takes the snap, drops back a little bit of pressure. He avoids it. Now he's going to tuck it under and run, and he'll get the first down as he's right outside the 10 yard line. And just as we were just talking about, Trey, when there's pressure, no receivers open, Lewis is able to scramble and make plays with his legs. And he was able to pick up about 11 yards on that play. As we see, he scrambles off to the right there. And just able to make a play and get the first down for the Blazers. First and 10, they did not get inside the 10 yard line. Derek Harris lined up to his right as he takes a snap and he'll give it to Harris. And he breaks off, but not able to get through the initial line. He's gonna lose about two yards on the play as they had pretty good pressure, initial pressure in there uh, by the Tiger defense. The tackle was made by number 22, Rodney Grant on that play. And it seems as if they're probably just prolonging the inevitable. I'm pretty sure the Blazers will dial up something and able to get to the end zone. As long as you have Kellen Lewis and all those playmaker wide receivers out there on the field, it's very rare that they don't get into the end zone in situations like this. Second down and 11 outside the 10. Lewis looking to his left, back across the middle, all day to throw. And he's going to find Cedric Evans, who makes a move, makes another move. And he got down just outside the goal line. But it will be a first down and goal for the Blazers. And Trey, Cedric Jones, I mean, uh, Cedric Evans, that is. Cedric Jones not in the lineup. Evans replacing him today. Was able to make a few moves there and get a first down, or almost a touchdown for the Blazers. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure either Kellen Lewis will take the ball and run it to the end zone here. If not that, they might hand it off to Eric Sledge and give him a chance to get into the end zone this time since they had a mishandled handoff last time they were this close to the end zone with Eric Sledge in the backfield. And it looks like the officials are going to measure on the play as he's just outside the goal line. Sharpen your skills and have some fun. Combat Laser Tag is coming to the front lawn. Come out on Wednesday, November 11th from 8 to 11 p.m. and enjoy free laser tag with an added edge. And it was a first down for the Blazers. as They'll be first in goal to go as they'll bring in their goal line formation on the play with Camille Holloway in there along with Eric Sledge lined up behind Kellen Lewis as he's underneath. And Lewis takes a snap, hands it off to Sledge, and he will power his way into the end zone. And a good run as the Blazers get on the scoreboard again. And look to go up by three touchdowns. Two touchdowns, excuse me. Daniel Anderson on for the extra point. And he'll put it up and good. And with 12.28 to go, it's Valdosta State 21 and the Tigers from Edward Waters 6. So far, both teams have come out and they play pretty hard, but the advantage goes to the Blazers that they've been able to put up three touchdowns here, unanswered touchdown, I might add, I might add so far in the first and the second quarter. And the Blazers have been pretty impressive here today. And it was a 11, 11 play drive, 68 yards. Took about a minute and 56 seconds as the Blazers were able to get their third touchdown of the day. And Trey, it just looks like the Blazers are not having any problem moving the ball today. Yeah, it looks as if this Blazer team came out extremely focused to go ahead and win the last game of the season. They know they don't have any chance of going to the postseason, so they're pretty much just trying to get a lot of those skilled guys some playing time to fill out how they feel about these guys out there on the field, see which guys they can trust and which ones might need a little bit more work in the offseason and see how they're going to build the team for next year. And check out these numbers from Kellen Lewis, 8 of 10 for 147 yards, one touchdown. And, of course, he's got that long 58-yard pass earlier in the game, which led to a touchdown. So just good numbers as he's had all day to throw. And when, he, when he's had any kind of pressure, he's just ran the ball out of the pocket, picked up yards, and 
made plays happen as the Blazers get ready to kick off. Yeah, so far the Blazers have had the has a mound 178 yards compared to the Tigers only 39 yards in this first half of football. Well, that was the first quarter, I might add. That was the first quarter the Blazers were able to get 178 yards. And kick off from left to right. And it will be Jonathan Johnson on the return as he crosses the 20 and gets to about the 22 yard line. And that's where the Tigers will take over first and 10. As we're just under 12 minutes to go in the second quarter, 21 to six, Valdosta State. And we might have an injured player on the field. As it might be Jonathan Johnson who returned the kick. It looks like he's down on the play. All right, with 12 minutes and 21 seconds left here in the second quarter, it'll be first and 10 when the Tigers take over back here at Baysmore High Stadium. We'll be, State, we'll be back in a second. I joined the National Guard and never thought I'd be saving lives. I put on the uniform and I have a whole new outlook on life. Country, community, family. That's what matters most to me. If that matters to you, go to 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM. We're back here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. 12.21 to go in the second quarter. The injured player was Jonathan Johnson, but he was able to walk off the field. And it'll be first and 10. Terman underneath, I formation, two receivers. And it'll hand off up the middle. Little hole, little seam. Ball might have come loose, and the Blazers jump on it. Was it a fumble? And yes, they will say it is a fumble, and the Blazers recovered on the play. And... That was recovered by number 47, Justin Curry. As it looked like the ball was jarred loose as the running back made it through the initial line of scrimmage. And the Blazers are able to recover at the 20 yard line where once again, Trey, they will take over on offense with a short field to work with. And when the Blazers have a short field to work with, good things tend to happen for this team. They're able to get the ball into the end zone and continue to run up the score like they've done so far this game. And they are pretty hard to stop as Lewis is in the shotgun with number 10, David Arnold lined up to his right. Trips receivers to the left as he'll send R.J. Bastone in motion. It'll hand it off to him on a sweep. Cuts back as there's nothing there. And he's brought down maybe a gain of about four on the play as they just brought him in motion on a little wide receiver sweep. And the tackle was made by number four, 47, Aaron Simmons, and number six, Rodriguez Owens. And it'll be about second and five with 11 minutes and 45 seconds to go. 21 to three, Valdosta State driving again, just inside the 15 yard line. Kellen Lewis in the shotgun with Arnold to his left. And he'll send Jackson Dean in motion. Snap, play action, looking to the right. He's gonna fire to, and the receiver and the corner got tangled up and both of them fell down. It looked like incidental contact as he was trying to get to R.J. Bastone on the play. Uh, coverage was made by number 27, Rodney Lay, and it looks like they just tangled up their feet. Incidental contact, no penalty on the play. Yeah, it looks like Kellen Lewis just went ahead and locked in to number six, R.J. Bastone on that play, because if you look to his left, he actually had number 84, Jackson Dean, running wide open down the field, and he would have been a touchdown for the Blazers, but I guess he decided who he wanted to give the pass to and just went with it. A rare miss for Kellen Lewis as he's had all day to throw. And he'll be in the shotgun with David Arnold to his left. Snap. A little bit of pressure from the backside, but he's going to get rid of it in time. And he's he's got Isaiah Jupiter. And he's able to shake a few tackles as he gets inside the 10 all the way down to about the 6-yard line. And that'll be first and goal to go for the Blazers as they are knocking on the door once again, Trey. Yeah, this Blazer team refuses to be denied of the end zone when they get down within the red zone and the short and yard situations like they have so many times here today. Kellen Lewis in the shotgun with Arnold to his left again. Isaiah Jupiter line up to the light. Three receivers to the near side. As Lewis takes the shotgun, he's going to look over to his right, pump fakes, can't find anybody. He's going to scramble over to his left. He gets around the initial corner and gets in the end zone for a touchdown. Once again, Kellen Lewis making plays with his legs when there are no receivers open, and he gets in for his first touchdown on the day, as that's going to put the Blazers up by three scores. 
and that's what makes Kellen Lewis so dangerous. Even if he can't find a wide receiver open downfield, he's able to, to keep his head on straight, and he just takes the ball and runs with it. And then, as you can see, he was able to get into the end zone like he's done so many times on the season. And shows off the legs there as he's able to get around the corner and into the end zone pretty easily as the extra point is on its way, and it's up, and it's good. And with 10.52 left in the second quarter, the Blazers will go up 28-6 to six over the Edward Waters Tigers. The VSU's women's club soccer team is now recruiting. The soccer club will begin playing in the spring with an interesting meeting coming soon. Contact Christian Naismith, president, at cmnaismith at valdosta.edu. And it looks like that was a three-play, 14-yard drive as the Blazers were able to put their fourth touchdown of the first half up and go up pretty big early on in the game. And as we've said before, Trey, that the Blazers have just had no problem moving the football. And you got to, I mean, you got to hand it to them. They're getting field position, great field position off turnovers, fumbles, and they're, have, they've had short fields to work with. And partially blocked punts as well. And when you have a good offense like Valdosta State has, giving them a short field to work with, there's not much a defense can do to stop that. And the, the coaches expected this offense to be a very explosive all season, but things didn't work out the way they expected. But as you can see here, the Blazers actually do it, did have potential to be that high-powered high offense that the coaches wanted them to be. Things just didn't work out. And Valdosta State will line up to kick off. Daniel Anderson will kick it off. And back returning the kick in place of Jonathan Hansen uh, will be number 83, Quintavious Nelson, as Hansen went off with an injury earlier. And the kickoff will be taken at the 10, over to the 15, across the 20 to the 25, found a little seam, but he's brought down flag on the play. Looks like we might have a block in the back or holding. And the tackle was made by number 42, Dudley Spence. But we'll check the flag. There is a flag on the play. As that was Quintavious Nelson filling in, receiving the kick once Jonathan Hansen went down on the previous kickoff with uh, an injury. And officials are huddling. Looks like they're going to see what the spot, where the foul occurred, and where they're going to mark penalty yardage from and uh, with 10.45 left in the second quarter it's 28 to 3 Valdosta State two fouls on the play as we have a holding penalty on the receiving team and a personal foul on Valdosta State so the penalties will offset and play the ball where it was spotted first and 10 as Quintavious Nelson returning the kick, brought it up, was brought down, didn't catch the holding penalty or the personal foul. Nevertheless, we have offsetting penalties, and it'll be first and Fans 10. Ball spotted inside the 30 yard line. Where the Tigers will take over first and 10. Trey, what do you think the Tigers need to do to move the ball down here on the Blazer defense and try and get on the scoreboard again and try and make a game of this? They're going to have to do what they did on their second drive. They're going to actually have to be able to protect the quarterback, give him time to survey the field, see if he has anything open. Or if not that, he has to take what the defense is giving him. So far, they've been stopping the run, and I've noticed that they've let a couple of screen plays or a little halfback passes out of the backfield go, but most, mostly the defense has been pretty solid. And the key is they're going to have to limit the turnovers as well. And Terman underneath, he's got two backs. He's going to step, fake a quick pass, look over the middle. He's got his receiver number five, Jonathan Hansen, who's back in there. And he's going to make it all the way across the 50-yard line as he picked up about 16, 17 yards on the play. And it's going to move it into Valdosta. There is a flag on the play. As it looks like this one might be coming back. It's thrown in the area of a holding penalty. And we'll see what it is. As if you're a Tiger fan, you just cannot 
afford to have penalties like that. You get a good play, and it gets moved back on a holding call, which is going to move them back. The holding call was on number 71 on the play. Well, this is nothing unusual for the Tiger offense. They've been known to be one of the leading teams in penalties in their conference, so I'm pretty sure the Tiger coaches are very used to it and they're probably trying to figure out a way to try to minimize those as the season progresses. And Terminal will take the snap, and he's in trouble. He's going to roll out to his right, and he's going to lob it up just out of bounds. Just had to get rid of it as he had pressure coming from the backside. Number 44, Ratu Rabello was in on the play, putting pressure on the quarterback and he just had to throw it away as nobody was open. Second down and 20. Terman made the right play there. He noticed that he, there was no way possible he would be able to get the ball to any of his wide receivers or be able to take the ball off and run with it. So he just threw the ball away, gave his team another chance to line up again on, on this drive and see if they can make something happen. And it looked like he tried a similar play there, Trey, that they did the previous play when they had the holding call, trying to draw a pump fake and get Hanson across, open across the middle. As Terman takes snap in trouble, and he's going to go down inside the 15-yard line. Number 11, Demarcus Flanagan in on the pressure, and that's going to back him up even more, Trey. And the Blazers' defense has been disrupting Thurman in the backfield all day. As you can see here, he doesn't really have time to set his feet. He's just bouncing around in the pocket until the Blazers finally get a hand on him, and he just falls down instead of taking a big hit from his backside. And we got third and about a mile now, Trey. What do you think the call is going to be here? Now, I'm pretty sure it looks as if they have the Wildcat formation back in here, so I'm pretty sure they're not expecting too much off this play. They're just trying to see what they can make happen. They might just want to play it safe, not risk turning the ball over and give Valdosta State a short field again. Wildcat formation, the running back's going to throw it, and he had his man, had a step on the corner, but he was unable to come up with it. The intended target was Samuel Charles on the play as – they were lined up in the Wildcat formation. Number seven, Casey Wilburn, was lined up back there. And he was able to, instead of run, he was looking to pass and had his intended target open with a step on the corner, but not able to connect with him. So it's going to force a punt. And he'll be punting from his own end zone as, once again, it might have been tipped at the line, but not a good punt. But it's going to get a favorable bounce for the Tigers. And it's going to roll keep rolling right outside the 40-yard line, down to the 41-yard line, and that's where the Valdosta State Blazers will take over on offense again. Fans, tune in Mondays, 8 to 10 p.m. on Blaze FM, 90.9 for a dose of the extreme with a, dis with a dis desecration mayhem. Mike brings you the heaviest, loudest, and most brutal metal in South Georgia. The desecration every Monday, 8 to 10 p.m., only on Blaze FM. Well, you know, Steve, I'm going to actually say something to you. I don't necessarily know if we can call that the Wild Tiger formation since Cesare Wilborn is actually listed as a quarterback here on the depth chart. It might be, unless he's a Pat White style of quarterback, I wouldn't necessarily say that it could be the Wild Tiger. But then again, you never know. And Lewis in the shotgun on first and 10. Fakes the handoff. It's going to be a quarterback sweep over the left. Makes a move. Cuts across the 50. Across the 45 to the 40. Stops his tracks. Jukes this guy. Makes three people miss. And look at this. He's going to be across the 20, but dragged down behind from the 15. Needed one more block tray, and he was sprung for a touchdown. And, and Michael Brown was trying to make the last block from behind to make sure the guy didn't hit Kellen Lewis while he was trying to set his blockers up downfield. But as you can see, there was a nice fake. A lot of Tigers bid on it, and Kellen Lewis was able to make the play. He finds a lot of daylight and shakes a couple of defenders, as you'll see in a couple of seconds here. Yep, there they are. He makes the move and cuts back across. And there was a face mask also on that play. Got away with the face. But the refs didn't see it. And first and 10 from the 15 as Lewis will give the handoff to Michael Brown. He breaks off of the sideline. Touchdown, Valdosta State. <laughs> And once again, two plays, and the Blazers are able to move it 60 yards and score. And Trey, this offense just keeps powering through and putting points up on the board as Michael Brown takes the handoff there, literally untouched as he walks into the end zone. And the Blazers are up 34 to 6 now, and they look to make it a four-touchdown game. 
aside from the loss of a lot of the seniors here who've had a very big impact on this Blazer team, I mean, they have a lot of bright spots also. I mean, Michael Brown, who just carried the ball as a sophomore, this man will be here for another two years playing for the Blazers. And as you've seen right there, he's a very explosive running back, and he was able to take the pitch and take it into the end zone. I, I, I expect to see a lot of great things from the stable of running backs that the Blazers still have, as well as from the wide receiver core. As you've seen, Gerald Ford was able to make a great block for Michael Brown out there on the outside so he can get to the edge to get into the end zone. And those are keys for the running backs. To get those wide receiver blocks on the outside to spring the running backs for extra yardage is key. And they were able to do that there. As the Blazers once again are just moving the ball all over the field. 60 yards in two plays as the Blazers go up 35 to 6. Don't forget to watch VSU TV for the latest local, state, and national news on VSU TV airing live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. or catch the rebroadcast at 6.30 p.m., 8 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Trey, what more is there to say about the athleticism of Kellen Lewis just making plays with his arm and his leg? To have that dual capability of throwing the ball downfield and being able to make plays with your legs, I mean, there's not much the defense can do to stop that. The only thing a defense can hope to do is possibly is try to contain Kellen Lewis. But then when you have a player as explosive, as, as dynamic as Kellen Lewis, I mean, there's not much game planning you can try to do for that. And Daniel Anderson on to kick off. As Jonathan Hansen is back in the kickoff returning spot, lined up with him is Anthony Wallace. As Hansen will take the kickoff at the five, and will bring it across the 15 to the 20, breaking back to his left missed tackle, but he'll get him anyway, and brought down at about the 22-yard line. Brought down by number 31, Ryan Smith on the play. Good pursuit by the Blazer kickoff team. As the Tigers will take over first and 10, just outside their own 20-yard line, with eight minutes and 39 seconds left to go in the half. And the Blazers are leading 35 to six. I'm pretty sure right now David Dean is probably just trying to evaluate some of these players, the, the ones that will be remaining on this wonderful team that he has here at, in Valdosta, at Valdosta State to try to see which ones he'll be able to put in and fill those voids once these seniors leave. And he certainly will miss those seniors as he led, they led them, helped lead them to two national championships in four years. And Case Caesar Wilburn is now the quarterback as he takes a snap, hands off up the middle, breaks through the initial line and gets up to almost the 30-yard line. Tackle made by number 97, Melvin Black, on the play. And it looks like a little bit of a misdirection play by the Tigers there. They got the offensive line going to the right, and then the halfback, as you can see here, cuts back to the left, and he was able to pick up a few more yards until he was brought down by number 97, Melvin Black, who's one of those senior leaders on this defensive line for the Blazers. So the Tigers mixing it up at the quarterback position as it's Cesari. Wilborn and he'll hand it off and not much doing on the play as he might have gotten to the 30 yard line. Looks like that's where the official's going to spot it. And nevertheless, it's going to bring up a third down, Trey. Yeah, so far this Blazer defense has been playing very well besides that one, the second drive that the Tigers was able to go downfield and get a touchdown, but it was due to the Blazers penalty that put him in such great field position to go ahead and get the score. An important play here for the Tigers as they try and move the chains and try and keep that Blazer offense off the field, Trey. And it'll be third and about one as Williams is underneath, Wilborn, excuse me, is underneath in the I formation. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far. And looking to the sideline maybe for a play change. And whistles blown on the play. I think coach on the Tiger side might have called a timeout. And as you can see, the leader of that Blazer defense, number 32, Larry Dean, trying to make the adjustments for the Blazers. We have seven minutes and 21 seconds left here in the second quarter. The Blazers are up 35 to six. Third and two for the Tigers when we return here on BSU TV at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Filing for Social Security online. Nine out of 10 experts agree it's groovier than a Brooklyn hot dog. Or Crips is it? And welcome back fans to Baysmore Hyder Stadium as it's third and one for the Tigers as they try to move the chains and keep their defense, but more importantly, the Blazer offense off the field. As Wilborn is in the shotgun and his play action, nothing doing as the Blazers ate that play up from the start. Loss on the play 
And in there with the pressure was number 56, Joseph Stevens, to blow up the play. And when you have a defensive tackle who's able to get into the backfield and disrupt the play like that, that's, that speaks volumes about your defensive line as well as how well your defense has been prepared for this game. And once again, the Blazer defense was able to step up and make the stop on third down as he will punt it away. And once again, it is a short kick. And he fumbled the snap. Fumbled the kick, and it looks like the Tigers covered it. And what a break that is for the Tigers if they indeed did cover. And they did recover. Blazer Dining is hosting their fourth annual Cans Across Vados the Can Food Drive November the 9th through the 13th. The drive will benefit Seconds Harvest of South Georgia's Vados the Food Bank. Donations are accepted at all campuses and dining locations. Join the fight against hunger with your Can Do Spirit. And it looks like Chris Wellborn just took his eyes off the ball as he was coming up into some pressure to try and make the catch. And he just fell right through his hands and the Tigers take over in good field position. First and 10, snap to Wilborn as he drops back in the pocket. He's going to sling it long and through the hands of his receiver, intended target Jonathan Hansen on the play. And he went up high as he was open. And he went up high and just couldn't haul it down. There was a variety of Valdosta State defenders in there, but I think they just lost sight of the ball as he had good protection. Just lofted it up for his tall receiver, and he just jumped up and not able to make the play. Trey, you mentioned earlier he might have had trouble with the sun there. Yeah, as you can see, he was looking back into the sun trying to make the catch, and it might have just blinded him for a second there, and he lost sight of it. High formation snap, give it to the back, and he's got a hole at the right tackle and he'll plow forward and get the first down of this game of about 11 on the play. Good run by the running back there as the tackles were made by number 32, Larry Dean, and number 26, Matt Pierce. And that was a nice run there by Javari Liggins. Their usual running back is Trent. Trentonio Stewart, who has actually had a pretty good season, but I, I haven't seen him on the field so far this game. Maybe they're trying to see what they also have as far as the players for next year. And first and 10, I formation again. Play action, looking in trouble, and he's going to scramble out his right, and we missed the tackle behind the line, and he's able to throw it away. And that was Demarcus Flanagan in there on the pressure, and it looked like he was going to have him for a loss behind the line, but just wasn't able to wrap him up. Good leg strength by the quarterback there as he was able to get out of the pocket and throw past the line of scrimmage to avoid the intentional grounding, but more importantly, avoid the sack. And it looks like the Tigers are just trying to see what options they have at quarterback for next season. Right here, Wilborn is looking. He doesn't see anything, but then he has the awareness to shake the defender. And then he's trying to run. He tries to break free here from Demarcus Flanagan. He's able to spin out of the tackle and it has just enough strength to get the ball out of bounds downfield instead of giving up the yardage for the, for the Tigers' offense. Good individual play and effort by Wilborn there as he is underneath again in an offset eye formation. And he'll give it to Liggins again, who breaks the tackle initially and pulls forward for about two yards on the play. Call it third and eight. Tackles made by number 32, Larry Dean, on the play. As another big third down for the Tiger offense coming up. Blazer defense has done a good job at keeping the Tiger offense off the field, but they need another stand here as we're at under five, six minutes to go in the second quarter. 35 to six, snap to Wilborn, drops back, and he throws it right into the hands of number 94, Demetrius Bozeman, as he brings it up over the 40 to about the 42 yard line. And Honestly, Trey, I'm not sure where he was throwing the ball there. It looked like he was throwing it right to Demarcus. Yeah. It looked as if he just wanted to make the freshman extremely happy. As number 94, Demetrius Bozeman out of little old Hawkinsville, Georgia, able to make the play for the Blazers and put his team in a pretty good position to go ahead and get another score before the quarter is over. As you can see here, Wilborn here, I guess he expected his man to come across the middle. Maybe he didn't see all that that massive man right there, number 94, uh, standing right there that, waiting Trey. for the pass. But hey. You win some, you lose some, and it looks as if he just lost the gamble on that pass. And I'm sure Demetrius Bozeman won't complain as he got a gift right there as that ball was laid right in his bread basket. And we have Russ Calloway coming in at the quarterback position. 
and he takes a snap and it's a handoff to Derek Harris on the play, but nothing doing as the Tiger defense is able to get him behind the line. And that was Rodney Grant in the backfield to make the stop. And the Blazers trying to get a little playing time. Some of the backups now, I guess, 35 to 6. A little early, I think, maybe for that. But it's been a mix of quarterbacks all year long, mixing in Russ Calloway with Kellen Lewis to try and put uh, just a little different look on the field, try to confuse the offense a little bit. But as once he looks to the once play. again, like I said, this is a pretty good time for Coach David Dean to get these guys some real game situations to try to evaluate to see what kind of talent he actually still has on his team once his seniors leave, leave and move on to other things in life. Snap, four receivers to the right, to, four, to the left. And he completes it. And he completed it to Owen Dixon on the play. And he got back just past the original line scrimmage for a gain of about two yards. It's going to be about third and eight as he found Owens on the flat. And he was able to pick up a couple yards as we'll have four receivers on the play, three to the far side, one to the near. Derek Harris lined up beside Russ Calloway in the backfield, shotgun formation, third down and eight. I wonder how much of a factor the sun has been today for the quarterbacks who are actually going down, headed into the sun, trying to make passes. Snap to Calloway, look back, and he's going to set up a screen play. He's got Derek Harris, and he shakes off a tackle. He pushes forward, and he's going to get really, really close to that first down. We'll have to see where the official spots the ball. And it's going to be close. It looks as if they're going to mark it just shy of the first down marker here. As you can see, Russ Calloway setting up the screen very nicely just before the defender gets there to make a hit on him. And as you see, Derek Harris just follows his blockers and tries to get as many yards as he can before he's brought down here, a down around the first down marker. And he will be just shy. It's going to be about four and a half a foot for the Blazers. And David Dean is not wasting any time. He's going to send out the punting unit to punt it away as he probably should with a substantial lead. Just punt the ball away, give him a long field to work with as the Tiger offense hasn't been able to move the ball regardless. Well, there was that one drive with a little bit of help from the Blazers, but other than that, they have been unsuccessful thus far. Fulford takes the low snap, but gets the punt off. High spiraling kick, fair catch made by Jonathan Hansen, and that's where the the Blazers will, or the Tigers, will take over first and ten. Fans need help writing your resume. Lambe Pieta, the Communication Honor Society, is here to help. Ann Stone, Assistant Director for the Office of Cooperative Education, will speak about resumes on November 23rd at 7:30 p.m. in Powell Hall. And the First and 10 for the Tigers, just inside their own 15-yard line. And it is Cesare Wilborn in the quarterback position again. Two receivers to the far side, two to the near. And that's Javari Liggins lined up as he takes a snap. No one open. He's going to run, and he's going to lose yards as number 49, Marcus Ned, is back in the backfield to make the tackle and get him for a loss of about two on the play. Call it second and 12. Trey, that was just good penetration by the defense there. Yeah, it looks as if the Blazers defense and off, but it looks like the Blazers team is just continuing with allowing this clock to go ahead and just run down and go into halftime and see how they feel about the first half of football and see what they can make happen in the second half. And Wilborn is in the shotgun with Liggins to his left. He'll take the snap, hand it off to Liggins as he cuts back across the middle. Not much doing there as he might have gotten two, maybe three yards on the play. It's going to bring up third down and long as we are just over right at three minutes to go in the half. 35 to 6 Blazers, all Blazers so far today. Third down and 10 on the play for the Tigers. Let's see what the Tigers are trying to get a play in from the sideline and try to go ahead and convert and move those chains and hopefully go downfield and put some kind of points on the board before the half. Wilborn in the shotgun takes a snap looking. He's got time. He's going to heave it long, and he just overshot his man as he had time, but just really nobody open. Just kind of threw it long in hope for his receiver, Jonathan Hansen, on the play to make a play. But he was unable to. 
and they're going to be punting from deep in their own territory again. And Trey, with the punting problems they've had, it looks like the Blazers are going to have good field position again. Yeah, it depends on if Wilburn is able to actually handle this punt this time. Last time he bobbled the snap and it was able to, the Tigers were able to get back on it. And short kick again as it bounces. And Chris Wellborn stays away from it that time as he fumbled the last punt. And it's going to be down right at the 50. Once again, short field for the Blazers as they'll take over first and 10. Maybe try and squeeze another scoring drive in before the half. I'm pretty sure the Blazers might not really be trying to score anymore. As you can see, they've taken out starting quarterback Kellen Lewis, and they just went ahead and went with Russ Callaway. So I'm pretty sure they'll probably just go ahead, snap the ball, do a couple run plays, a couple passes here and there. Well, as you can see, Kellen Lewis has come back in the game. I thought right, he might have been done Right, as you say, that today. Lewis comes back in at quarterback. too soon. And, of course, in their spread formation, as usual, two receivers to the near side, two to the far, and he's going to take the snap, and he's going to throw it right across the middle and he's got his receiver, Jackson Dean, who fights for extra yardage. And he's going to be right at the first down mark. I think he did get it just over the 40 is what he needed, and he will have a play. Trey, you made the point earlier about the sun, and it looks like the sun is going into the, the quarterback's face, but you would rather have the quarterback looking at the sun than the receivers trying to catch the ball looking to the sun as he takes a snap and fires over here. To the near side to R.J. Bastone, breaks off a couple tackles, tries to cut back, and loses his footing as, once again, he's near another first down. It looks as if it might be back-to-back -back first down for the Blazers. Once again, they were able to set the screen up nicely, and R.J. Bastone was able to follow his blockers and pick up the 10 yards for the first down on the, for the Blazers. So as you can see here, Kellen Lewis just finds R.J. Bastone nicely set up there. He has a couple of wide receivers buddies there helping him out, and he was able to pick up the yards for the first down. Once again, good downfield blocking by his receivers as split receivers two to the left, two to the right. Kellen Lewis looks, looks like a quarterback sweep. No, he's going to throw it and caught by Jackson Dean as he took a lick on the play but held on and all the way down to the 15, and that's another first down play, Trey. Three in a row for the Blazers as they are moving the ball down the field. Once this Blazers just offense gets going, it's very hard to stop the Blazers offense. And as you can see here, Kellen Lewis, even though he's running to his left, and he's a right-handed quarterback. He's able to get adjusted and make the pass downfield for another first down. And that's important to turn those shoulders and make a good accurate throw, and he did that. Handoff up the middle to Arnold. He's met at about the 16-yard, oh, excuse me, the 11-yard line. And it'll be second down with just over a minute to go in the half. The Blazers are second down and call it about six on the play. Lewis in the shotgun again, three receivers to the near side, one to the far, Arnold lined up to his left. Lewis drops back, fires in the end zone, got his man, touchdown. That's R.J. Bastone. And that is second touchdown of the day for Bastone. And it comes with just under a minute to go in the half. Once again, Lewis had all day in the pocket to throw, threaded the needle a little bit in between the defenders and found R.J. Bastone in the back of the end zone for a touchdown as and the Blazers look up to look to go f up 42 to 6. And that was a very nicely thrown pass there by Kellen Lewis. A lot of people think that Kellen Lewis is mainly just a running style quarterback, but as you can see, if Kellen Lewis is given time to stand back in the pocket and survey the field and try to find his guys, he can actually hit him in stride and thread the needle as he did just then. As we saw in the previous play, Lewis, you know, scrambled off to his left and it looked like he wanted to run the ball, but kept his eyes downfield and was able to find his receiver and make an accurate throw. And that's what people don't realize, that he has both aspects of his game. And with the running and the passing, he was running, able to keep his eyes downfield and find the open receiver. Just a good play and effort by Kellen Lewis as he leads the Blazers right down the field once again for their sixth scoring drive of the day. You know, Steve, that's just what good quarterbacks do. They're able to run the ball when they need to, and they're also able to take the ball outside of the pocket and then readjust and throw the ball downfield to the wide open receivers who can pick up more yards through the air than they will be able to do on the ground. And although this is this is only Kellen Lewis's first year here at Valdosta State, he will certainly be missed by head coach David Dean, I'm sure. Just that versatility he brings at the quarterback position, like we've discussed, running and throwing the ball. I mean, you see at high school he went to – Indiana University was a very good player over there and transferred over to Valdosta State, and he's just been a superstar here ever since. And with 53 seconds left to go in the half, 
the Blazers will be kicking off to the Tigers, and we'll see what the Tigers are able to do. Maybe put together a quick scoring drive. It'll have to be quick if they want to try and get on the board again before the half. But we're looking at a 42-6 to deficit, most likely, unless the Tigers can put together a scoring drive. As he will kick off, and Jonathan Hansen back to receive the kick again at his own seven. Across the 15 to the 20, he's found a seam across the 30 to the 35, coming on to the near side to midfield, stops, and he's thrown out of bounds. Almost a late hit out of bounds. And he will get into Valdosta State territory to about the 48. And Trey, that might have provided a little spark to maybe put some points on the board before the half. Yeah, it might give the Tigers a little momentum going into the halftime so they can go in there and get reevaluate themselves on things they've done this, well, this half so far and things they need to do in order to try to make this game interesting. And with 43 seconds left in the half, they will have to put that hurry up offense into effect to try and get some points, at least get close enough for a field goal attempt to try and put points on the board. And it will be Wilborn at the quarterback position. It seems so far he's been the best option at the quarterback position. He's been able to provide a little spark for the offense as they haven't had much to work with today. Single set back, handoff up the middle and it's gonna be Liggins and he'll gain maybe a yard, not much on the play. And it looks like they might just be opting to just run out the clock, I'm not sure. And it's gonna be second and about 10. He didn't gain, he got back to the original line of scrimmage as Wilborn's in the shotgun, takes the snap and he's gonna look over to the right, caught and hit immediately, drawing the ball loose out of bounds, not sure. No, they're calling it an incomplete pass on the play. It was intended for Stephen Brady on the play, and he just he just felt the pressure of Stevie Harden, who came up from his blind side and put a pretty good lick on him, Trey, and jarred the ball loose, just wasn't able to bring it in. And that's what the Blazers expect from their cornerbacks. They have the smaller, more physical cornerbacks who are able to run up and hit the wide receiver as they're trying to bring the ball in and hopefully knock it loose, as you saw right there. And with 16 seconds left in the half, this could be a last play as he'll heave it deep towards the end zone, but nobody open, just overshot his receiver, overshot everybody. And nine seconds left in the half. We'll see what the Tigers decide to do, if they decide to punt it or try and run around maybe and kill the clock and not put the Blazers, give them a chance to run it back or anything as they cannot afford that at all. And it looks like they will go for it on fourth down, try and run out the clock a little bit. Give it back to the Blazers with little to no time left on the clock. As Wilborn will take the snap with five receivers and he's gonna heave it over to the sideline. Too tall for his receiver as it's incomplete out of bounds. And with four seconds to go, the Blazers will take over. I imagine they will just kneel the ball and be satisfied with a 42 to six lead at the half. Right, right now the Blazers don't have too many things to worry about as far as the offense and the defenses go. All they need to do now is go in and come out with the same kind of enthusiasm they had at the beginning of this game and just continue to play well. As long as the defense comes back out and they continue to execute as well as the offense continues to move the ball, then Blazers are in pretty good shape to come away with the win here at Bazemore Hyder. And I'm sure that will be the talk in the locker room at halftime for Coach David Dean, that to not be content with the score, come out, execute the game plan, and play through the entire game, no matter what the score is. And Lewis will just take the snap and take a knee to kill the clock. And that will do it for the first half of the game. And at the end of the first half, it's 42 to six, Valdosta State. Join us back at the second half here on VSU TV. Millions of Americans suffer from poverty, but passionate people like you can do something about it. Join Vista. You can teach teens how to mentor children at risk. Recruit volunteers to feed the hungry or help homeless veterans find shelter and employment. AmeriCorps Vista has more than 6,500 opportunities for you to help fight poverty. Go to Vista.gov or call 800-942-2677. And now, another adventure with Savings Man. 
year. I can't afford that. Charge it. You can pay it off later. Not so fast, credit card guy. Savings man. Don't let him entice you, ma'am. Credit card guy can lead you to big trouble. You need a savings plan. You're right, savings man. Get this ballpark estimate worksheet at choosetosave.org. It will help you get started. Gee, thanks, savings man. No, thank you. So visit choosetosave.org and get your ballpark estimate today. My father spent his last teenage birthday in a rain of fire. I will not die here, he said to himself. Fifty years later, he whispered the same thing to me from the hospital bed. Hospice provides the end-of-life care you and your loved ones want and need. It's available to everyone. With the help of the people at our local hospice, he got his wish, and so did we. Hospice care. Comfort and compassion when it's needed most. back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium between today's contest between the Valdosta State Blazers and the Edward Waters Tigers. And it's just the route is on here in Valdosta as they lead 42 to 6 as we start the second half. And to make matters worse, Trey, Valdosta gets the ball first thing in the second half. And so far in this game has been all Blazers. The Blazers have just done 41 plays and have still managed to gain 354 yards where Whereas the Tigers, on the other hand, they've done 37 plays but only been able to accumulate 49 yards. That's just a total domination on both sides of the ball for the Blazers as Kellen Lewis is 15 of 19 for 213 yards, two touchdowns, and, of course, that long 58-yard pass he had in the first quarter. Well, I can tell you this. The, the Tigers still have been able to manage something in this game, and that's the time of possession. So far, the Tigers have had the ball for 15 minutes and 14 seconds, whereas the Blazers have only had it for 14 minutes and 46 seconds. And we'll see how the second half plays out as the Tigers get ready to kick off, as it will be number 22, Rodney Grant, the defensive back, who will be kicking off from left to right, and he'll kick it off. It's a low-lining squib kick. Uh, picked up at the 25 by Derek Harris as he finds a little hole, breaks off to the left, coming back to the sideline, breaks off a couple tackles, and then he's swarmed by a numerous amount of Tiger defenders at the 50-yard line where the Blazers will take over first and 10. Once again, good territory to start off with as they look to pick up right where they left off in the first half. I'm interested to see which unit the Coach Dean sends out on the field. Will he come back out with the starters and try to – Get another touchdown here on the board. Would let Kellen Lewis actually take a break. It will be the first team still in there. Trying to get a lot of the seniors in there as this will be their last collegiate football game as the Blazers will not be attending the postseason this year. And so we got first and ten, three receivers to the far side, one to the near. Kellen Lewis, and that's David Arnold, lined up beside him in the backfield. Snap, give it to David Arnold. He's a sweep over to the right, breaks off first couple tackles, not able to get away from the second as he's brought down around the 51-yard line, call it a gain of one. Number 46, Lorenzo Capehart on the tackle there. And that was a nice hard run there by David Arnold. Even though he wasn't able to get as many yards as I'm sure he would have liked to have gotten, he still was able to break a tackle and pick up a few yards for the Blazers. Well, one yard for the Blazers. Arnold will remain in the backfield with Kellen Lewis as they're in the shotgun. Three receivers to the near side as they take the snap. Lewis looking across the middle. Got his receiver number 19. That is Gerald Ford. And he'll be close to a first down, but shy of about three yards. Call it third and three. It was Aaron Sims in on the tackle. And that's one, of, and it, Gerald Ford is one of the bright spots for the Blazer here on offense. Even though they're losing Cedric Jones and RJ Baston and a lot of the other senior wide receivers, Gerald Ford will be able to step in next year and hopefully make a lot of big plays for this Blazer offense. Just a freshman, but has a bright future ahead of him. Kellen Lewis in the shotgun, and he'll take it, sweep over to the right. Looks like he's going to keep it, and he'll make something out of nothing as he leaps over a defender across the 40, now near to the 35. It'll be enough for a first down, and they move the chains again. And that was a design run from the very beginning. I guess Coach Dean has seen how well Kellen Lewis has been able to run the ball here today. And as you see here, he calls his number again, and Kellen Lewis steps up to the challenge, and he does just that, picking up nice yardage right here on this run. As you see, he hurdles one defender and steps straight through a couple of others and picks up nice yardage. Just shows you the athleticism of the quarterback as he leaps over defenders, get that extra yardage for the first down as he takes a snap, give it to Arnold, sweep to the right side, found a hole, breaking loose down the sideline, 10-5, touchdown Blazers. 
And we have a late flag. It might be a block in the back or a holding. So hold on a minute, fans. We might have this one coming back. David Arnold is 5'10", 213 pounds of pure power, and I've never seen him move so fast in my life. I guess he saw the end zone and he got a little bit excited, and the adrenaline went to pumping, and those legs went to moving. And a couple of the Blazer players are signaling that the penalty is against the Tigers, and it is. It's a dead ball personal foul. So the touchdown will stand, and good run by Arnold on the play as he scrambled about 35 yards for the score. And just to add insult to injury as they go up, look to go up 49 to 6 on the Tigers. As Daniel Anderson's on for the extra point, it's up and it's good. And with 13 minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the third quarter, it's Blazers 49, Tigers 6. So far, out of all the drives that the Blazers have been able to get touchdowns on, only one of them has taken them more than four minutes. The rest are less than a minute when they manage to go down the field and score. The Blazers have always been very dangerous when they were able to get the ball down the field very fast because they tend to work a lot more efficiently when they tend to run the hurry up offense. As you noted, there was only two drives they did not score. That first drive of the game where they fumbled down near the goal line, and of course, they had a fourth in short right around midfield, but they opted to kick the ball while they had a good lead and punted it away. So not much action seen by the punter today as the offense for Valdosta State has been able to move it. Once again, they were given a short field from a good kickoff return, and they were able to go 50 yards for the score, capped off by the 35-yard run by David Arnold and for the, for the touchdown as they are up 49-6. to six. And the personal foul penalty is assessed on the kickoff so the Blazers will be kicking off from the 45, and I'm sure, I'm sure Daniel Anderson is just going to try and kick this one out of the stadium here to prevent any kind of return, try as he only sure has 4, 55 as, yards of field to work with. Try to make sure they have to go as far as they possibly can before they're able to bring it back out to midfield. So far, the return team has been able to do a pretty good job bringing the ball back up field. So I'm pretty sure Daniel Anderson will try to pin him as deep as he can to, put his defense in pretty good position to make another stop here and get the Blazers offense another possession. That has been one bright spot for this Tigers team on the day as it kicks off and the ball will sail out of the back of the end zone. Oh, and he thought of it, and he is going to bring it out. He's at the goal line and he's going to make it out to the 5 to the 10 and he gets all the way out to the 15 as that ball almost went out of the back of the end zone tray and a little hesitation on the play as whether to, to decide if he was going to run it out or not. That was Quintavious Nelson. And it was almost a disaster as he almost got tackled at the goal line but made something out of nothing and got him up to the 15. That has to be a coach's worst nightmare when you see that ball almost out of the end zone and then your, your return man decides that he's going to take it out of the end zone with so many of the defenders standing around looking at him. But he was able to make the heads up play, make a defender miss, and bring it out to the 15. And at this point, the Tigers are just trying to do all they can to make something happen, spark something, just to make the score at least somewhat a little closer as it's 49-6 to here. And it is Wilborn in the quarterback, no backs, as he slings it over too tall for his receiver, let him just a little too much. And that was number 10, Stephen Braddy, the intended target, and it's going to bring out, bring up second and 10 on the play. This had the tight ends slowly sneak out into the open, and he was unable to hit him. He had plenty of space and probably could have turned to the field for at least six or seven yards. But I guess, once again, that Blazer defense is starting to rattle the quarterback a little bit, and he's unsettled back there in the backfield. And five receivers set as Wilborn is alone in the backfield. And the defense showing maybe a blitz coming on and maybe calling an audible at the line is Wilborn as he's in the shotgun, five receivers. Snaps, looking, gets pressure, gets nailed as he throws the ball. And it's a jump ball, but tipped out of bounds as he took a good lick just as he released the ball on the play. And that was number 24, Carlos Anderson, in on the deflection. And he's the one of the senior cornerbacks with this Blazer team. He's played all four years here at VSU, and he's been a pretty outstanding corner, as you can see on that play. And that was Moore getting in there and putting the big lick on the quarterback all in his face and 
delivered a big hit on the quarterback as he wasn't able to step up in the pocket and make a good accurate throw. And it's third and 10 from their own 15. Wilborn alone in the backfield as there's five receivers. He takes a snap, look quick throw over to the left, back on the 12-yard line, and he'll get up to about the 20 to the 21-yard line. But they will be short of a first down, and the punting unit will come on. And it's another three and out for the Tigers. And that was Marcus Ned on the tackle, among others. Fourth and about three. And it looks as if the Blazers' defensive backs are just giving a little cushion to the wide receivers to prevent the big play and are able to have the speed and athleticism to get up and stop the short yardage. Chris Wilburn, he bobbles the punt again, and the Tigers look like they have recovered. And it has been a struggle for Chris Wilborn today receiving punts, as that is his second muff of the day. And the Tigers did recover. To me, it kind of looked as if there might have been a little contact there early on the play, but then again, he didn't fair catch it. But, uh, but as long as they gave him a little chance to, or a little room rather, to try to make the catch, then it should have been fine. But it looks as if they might have got to him just a little early, but no call, so. I'm sure head coach Dean will have a talk with Wellborn on the sideline after that, his second muff of the game. Of course, not too detrimental to uh, the outcome of the game, most likely as it's 49-6. to six. Snap, throws quick pass over to the left, and he's got Samuel Charles as he pushes forward, and he's going to be out of bounds at about the 35-yard line, close to a first down. We'll see where they mark the ball. And he's about a yard shy of the first down. It'll be second and one as they are going with the no huddle and the five receiver set, trying to get some yards through the air as Wilborn is in there at quarterback, trying to make something happen for the Tiger offense. And he's going to come up underneath, and he's going to take the direct snap, and he's going to try and bounce out to the right side to get the first down, but he's going to lose yardage. And the head coach is not happy about that as he only had a yard to go for the first down, and he ended up losing a couple yards. I think the intended play was just to dive forward and try and get them to pick up the yard, move the chains. But he tried to do a little too much as he bounced it out to the right and lost yardage all the way back to the 40-yard line. It's going to bring up third and five now, Trey. Once again, this Blazer defense has been pretty solid here, not giving up the, the little run play up the middle for the first down. And the Blazers will look for a stop here on third and five. Shotgun, snap. Looking, got time, pressure, and he's just going to have to throw it away as the pressure was in his face. And it's another three and out for the Tiger offense. Blazer defense has stepped it up all day, Trey. And that was number 94, Demetrius Bozeman, getting into the backfield. As you've seen him earlier with the interception, and then the pressure on the quarterback to force him to throw the ball away and give this Blazers offense another, ch another chance to go downfield and put more points on the board. And it's Myron Donaldson on for the punt. And it looked like it might have been a fake punt option there, but he ended up kicking it out of bounds. We'll have to see where the officials spot it as he keeps moving up. And it looks like the ball will be spotted at about the 33-yard line where the Blazers will take over first and 10. Football fans, football season is ending, but Blazer basketball is right around the corner. The home opener for the Lazy Lady Blazers is November 15th at 2 p.m. versus Lander, and the men tip off on the 16th at 8 p.m. versus Carver. Come support your Blazers at the complex. Admission is free for all students. And Kellen Lewis is the quarterback as he'll be lined up in the shotgun with Eric Sledge lined up to his right. Two receivers to the far side, two to the near. First and 10 from the 33. Lewis takes the shotgun, looking, looking. He's going to throw it out on the flat to Eric Sledge, who fell down as he caught the ball. Might have lost a yard on the play. Second down and call it 11. And it looks like Lewis is going to come out, and Callaway will be replacing him at quarterback. It'll be interesting to see how much more Lewis is used today as the score is 49-6 to with 10 minutes and 43 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Once again, Callaway, the quarterback, 
Eric Sledge lined up to his left, trips receivers to the near side, one receiver to the far side, as he'll take the snap, quick pass over to the near side, and that's R.J. Bastone and just not much room to work with. He might have lost a yard on the play, and it's going to be about third and 12, as he was not able to get much after the pass there. Kind of surprised that so far the coach Dean has actually let Kellen Lewis well, play two series in this game. I want to see if he's going to let him come back on the next drive, but then again, we might just start to see some of the sacking unit come in and try to go ahead and finish this game out. And Donnie Powell has come in at the fullback position to line up on the other side of Russ Calloway, along with Eric Sledge. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. Calloway in the shotgun. Takes the snap, drops back. He's got time all day to throw. He's going to scramble out to the left side. Pressure from the backside, and he's just going to have to throw it. Looks like he might have been trying to go to Powell on the play, but just threw it low. And it's a three and out for the Blazers, so a decent stand by the defense for the Tigers. As the Blazers will be forced to punt for only their second time on the day, Trey. Well, when you have an extremely high-powered offense like the Blazers do, that first unit, you can – tend to move the chains very often without having to punt the ball as they have done today. But usually when the second unit in, they tend to stall just a little bit. I'm pretty sure it's because the guys aren't as familiar with each other as the first unit is, and it just comes with experience. They might need to get a few more snaps. Jack Fulford on the punt, and he gets it away. It's a high kick coming down, no receiver. And f actually, Jonathan Hansen picked it up off the bounce as it looked like it might have bounced, was going to bounce out of bounds, but it stayed in, and he picked it up. Didn't gain anything on the play as it'll be first and 10 from the 35, where the Tiger offense will take over. Blaze FM 90.9 on your radio dial is back on the air. That means that the Skip Gildersleeve has returned with, lest we forgotten, a celebration of college radio's past every Sunday night at 9 p.m. on WVVS. And the Tiger offense is headed back onto the field, and Cesare Wilborn is still the quarterback. And they'll have trips receivers to the far side, two to the near side as they go with a five re wide receiver set again, as that's all they've been going to as so far in the second half. Try to put up some yardage, and we're going to have a blitz on the weak side, and he doesn't get to the quarterback in time, floats it up, and too tall for his wide receiver. The intended target was Jonathan Hansen, and he felt a little pressure on his blind side there, as I believe it was Ratu... Rabello coming in from the weak side. The Blazer defense the has been in the backfield all day long. I haven't seen too many plays where the quarterback was actually able to stand in the backfield, set his feet, and try to find a man down the field so he can try to connect for a big play and hopefully spark the offense into something good. Five wide receivers set. Will Bourne in the shotgun takes the snap. Pressure. They're setting up the screen. And it's Josh, Josh Johnson, Jonathan Johnson again, and he is met immediately by number 51, Tommy Duhart. That's a defensive tackle. But they get about three yards on the play, and once again, it's going to be third and long as the Blazers were out the pressure here. They dump it off his tall pass. Jonathan went up high and was just met immediately by Duhart for a minimal game on the play. So good pursuit and good coverage on the screen by the Blazer defense as they've been playing good defense all day long. And Robello disguised the blitz, came over to the near side, and he's got his receiver. Oh, could have been a late hit out of bounds, no flag. Nevertheless, it will be enough for a first down. And it's the one time that the Tigers have been able to move the chains so far this second half, Trey. And that's because they did a quick drop there. After he had the, came out the shotgun formation, he got the ball extremely quickly, and he got it out of there faster, and were able to pick up the first down. And we have a quarterback change back out here. And They're going back to their starter here, Terman. Terman is back in the quarterback spot as he'll take the snap. Quarterback draw, and he's got some room. He's found a hole across the 40 down to about the 36-yard line, brought down. That's a gain of about 13 yards and enough for a first down as it was Matt Pierce on the tackle along with Dudley Spence. So Terman was back in at quarterback. We haven't seen him since the second quarter when Wilborn came in, and he's going to stay in at quarterback with Javari Liggins lined up to his right. 
And three receivers to the far side, one to the near. As he'll take the snap, hand it off to Liggins, and he's coming off to the left. Met immediately right around the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of a yard on the play. That's going to bring up second at about nine. As he came across on the sweep and was hit immediately at the line of scrimmage and brought down for a minimal game. And that was the Tigers' will. seventh first down so far of this contest. The Blazers are currently have 19, and the Tigers just got their seventh. So it goes to show you how well this Blazer defense has been playing thus far this game. Just been a total domination on both sides of the ball as Terman takes the snap, fires it over to the near side, and he'll make a few defenders miss and get about two yards on the play and call it about third and five is coming up for the Tiger offense as they push forward and try and get some more points on the board as he completes it to Samuel Charles there. Makes a couple guys miss and picks up a couple yards. Third and five for the Tigers. And Truman in the shotgun, bunch formation receivers to the left. Sends Liggins in motion over to the far side. He'll take the snap, looking, got time, throws it across the middle, makes a one-handed catch. Jonathan Hansen and brought down from behind. That'll be enough for a first down. And Trey, that's three first downs in a row as the Tigers are moving the ball down the field. Yeah, well, it looks as if maybe the Blazer defense is starting to get a little comfortable with the lead that they have out there. And they're slowly letting this Tiger offense gain some momentum. As you can see here, the quarterback actually has time to stand back there and set his feet. And when he does that, he had good things happen. He's able to find his man who breaks a tackle and picks up a first down for the Tiger offense. And Hoth Hansen made a good one-handed catch. Good play to hang on to the ball as they'll give it to Liggins. And not much room as the Blazers met him right around the line of scrimmage and brought him down for no gain on the play. Second and about 10. Once again, good, good penetration by the defensive line to stop the run before they was able to bounce through or get through for any kind of yardage. And they're going to stay with the bunch formation with the receivers on the left side of the line of scrimmage. One receiver to the right side, snap. Looking, got time. He's got Hansen again wide open across the middle, spinning around, and they'll bring him down at about the 15-yard line. And it looks like he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down, as that was Ratu Rabello that brought him down. And Hansen did the right thing on that play there. As you can see, Terman still having plenty of time to stand in there and throw the ball. Finds Hansen over the middle, who looks upfield and tries to see what the defense is doing. But he keeps his leg moving right here at the end of the play to try to pick up a couple more yards for the offense. And it looks like Jonathan Hansen has been the hot receiver and the favorite target for both quarterbacks on the game today, as he has numerous catches on the day. And Turman was underneath Liggins behind him. Play action rolling out to the right. Got some pressure. One handed grab by number 15, Scott Peters. We haven't caught his number today, but he made a good catch there. But it looks like he's going to, yeah, he did pick up the first down. with a nice little play action fake there. Terman throws up a wobbly pass. They're like a wounded duck throw, and Peterson was able to come down with it and convert for the team. Nice play by the young man there. Just a good individual play and effort by Scott Peters as his first catch of the day. Terman hooks back, looking, rolling to his left, looking in the end zone, can't find anybody, and a good open field tackle, and that's number 86. Correction, number 36 on the play, and that is Sean Weathers, who made a good open field tackle to prevent the quarterback from getting any more yardage, and it's going to bring up second and about seven. Yeah, if Sean Weathers would have bid on any of those fakes that Terman was throwing his way, it would have been another six points for the Tigers' offense here today at Baysmore Hyder. And Terman is in the shotgun again with Liggins to his right, two receivers to the far side, two to the near, and that's... Takes the snap looking, can't find anybody. He's going to scramble again, get to the five, and brought down at about the five. That's going to bring up a third down and about four, call it maybe about four yards on the play. As once again, he scrambles here. Can't find anybody open. Good pressure by the defense. And he tries to make something with his legs, but the defense pursued and made the tackle at about the five. Third, third down for the Tiger offense as they'll send two receivers in motion, one to the far side, one to the near. 
as Turman is in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Liggins picks up the blitz. Fight looks, can't connect with his target as he was going for Scott Peters again. Couldn't make another outstanding catch again. And that's going to bring up fourth down. I imagine the Tigers are going to go for it, being down 49 to 6. No point in going for three here, Trey. And it looks as if the quarterback is still on the field, so I'm pretty sure they're going to go for it here. I'm, right now, it's pretty much the time where, hey, I have nothing else to lose. It's 49 to 6. Three minutes here left in the third quarter. Hey, what, what else do I have to lose? And what you have to lose is right as the Tigers are 0-9 on the season. No reason to go for three points. They will stay. Offense will stay on the field. Fourth down. They can still pick up a first down. But the snap and pressure, and he goes down. Terman is taken down, sacked on the play, and that will be a turnover on downs. Well, this turns out to be a positive for both teams, depending on how you look at the situation. Even though they were able to get it to the backfield and disrupt the passing play here and get the sack there on Terman, right now the Tigers have pinned the Blazers deep into their own territory. The ball will be on the 10-yard line, but the Blazers, on the other hand, didn't give up the touchdown or the field goal, so now they're back where they, they left off. The score, 49-6. to six. And Russ Calloway will remain at the quarterback position as the Blazers will have the ball first and 10 from their own 10. And they'll have uh, three receivers to the near side as that's Gerald Ford, Cedric Evans, and Isaiah Jupiter handed off to Michael Brown up the middle. He stumbles but keeps his feet and pushes forward close to the 20, about the 18-yard line. He's going to be about two yards shy of the first down. And that was, that was Jesus Jackson on the carry as we get another running back mixed in uh, in the offense here late in the in the third quarter. Callaway in the shotgun. Jackson to his left, three receivers to the far side. Give it to Jackson. He cuts back across the middle. He's going to cross the 20, stays on his feet to the 25 and gets up to about the 27-yard line, and that will be enough for first down. And we got a late flag coming in from the referee in the backfield. Throw it across the field. Might be a dead ball, dead ball foul as Jackson cuts across, spins off, does a great job of keeping his feet and not going down and picking up the first down yardage. And we'll see what the flag is. And the referees continue to talk it over. Pointing going on both sides. up all the way into Tiger territory and that is just lack of focus not what you want to see especially when you're down 49 to 6 you can't just make mental errors like that and move the Blazers up even more as they're looking to put together another scoring drive and the ball is placed all the way up to the 44 yard line of the Tigers where the Blazers will take over first and 10 and Callaway's in the shotgun. Referee blows the whistle, stop the clock momentarily. Well, things might turn up for Russ Callaway now that the, actually the sun is to his back. He might actually be able to look down the field and find his wide receivers instead of looking into the sun. We'll have to see if the receivers have trouble looking back to receive the pass if the sun plays any factor in them catching the ball. Okay, here we go. First and 10 from the 43. Galloway in the shotgun takes a snap, quick snap, quick pass over to Cedric Evans. He takes the ball across the 40 and breaks a couple tackles, and he's still on his feet across the 35, still weaving, and he's finally taken out at about the 30. And another late flag as we have a lot of extracurricular activity going on on the sideline. And, and as we see here, Cedric Evans gets it in the backfield and crosses the 40 and just keeps, stays on his feet, moving to the left, to the right, dodging, diving, weaving in and out, stays on his feet. Look at him there, and he finally gets pushed out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. 
And then we had a lot of pushing and shoving on the sideline after the play. And it looks like we're going to have personal fouls again. Who will it be on? If it's on the Tigers, that is just another mental mistake that they make, pushing the Blazers even closer to that end zone. And it's two penalties on the defense, on the Tigers again, as they had they had unsportsmanlike conduct and a dead ball personal foul. And that is two times, Trey, this drive, that they've had two penalties, dead ball, personal fouls, on one play. The, the Tigers are just frustrated. They're just trying to get out there and make a play, and hopefully something will happen. But as you can see, the frustration is getting to them. And instead of making plays, they're just making mistakes, and it's hurting them in the long run. And there's another flag and thrown another right there flag on the field. is coming in. And yeah. look at the, this. Is just, this is just embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Every single official on the field has thrown a flag. And this is just, you don't want to see this. This, he's going to be ejected from the game. And we have a lots of frustration going. It's had to be a long season for the Tigers. Officials, if we look on the field right now, there's, there's five, five flags on the field. I think every single official out there, six flags on the field, threw a flag on that play as one of the Tiger players That's number 25 has had three personal fouls on him in the past two minutes. Defensive but. back Travis Knight. But that was number 11, Denton Thompson, who picked up the football and kicked it out of sheer disgust upon the calls Total that the rest are making out there on the field. Total frustration setting in, as you said, Trey. Number 11, after another dead ball penalty was thrown, picked up the ball, punted it, and then proceeded to throw his helmet to the ground. And obviously we saw the official throw up his hands. That would be an automatic ejection from the game as he will no longer be able to play. Six flags on the field, as we said. And just, you, you just don't want to see that. I mean, it's been a long season for the Tigers. 0-9, you know, winless on the year. They've get penalties called on them all day. The offense has been, the Blazer offense has been pushing the ball, driving on them all day. And you just see frustration setting in. And well, it'll be interesting to see what, what the initial call is from the referee. As there's a, looks like the referees are talking with the Valdosta State. And I'm not quite sure what's, what is going on here as the officials are talking with the whole, with the entire team of Valdosta. And the entire team of Tigers are on the field right now. I'm not sure. Well, the Tigers are one of the highest penalized teams in their conference. And as you can see, the, the penalties are playing a very big factor here today. So far, the Tigers have nine penalties for 102 yards. And the Blazers only have four penalties for 50 yards. And as you can see, penalties tend to hurt you. It's, it's 49 to 6 right now, and those penalties, they're not good for you. And the athletic director, Herb Reinhardt, is on the field joining the referee. Uh, they're discussing something, and it looks like they're heading over here to the, uh, the sideline of the Tigers to just talk with the head coach. And we have police officers on the field. Just total mayhem going on here. I'm not quite sure what we're going to have. As it looks like the head football coach from the Tigers is talking with Herb Reinhardt, the athletic director for Valdosta State. And it'll be interesting to see what is going to go down here. This play is still stalled at 2 minutes and 26 seconds to go in the third quarter. Still your score, 49-6 to six Blazers. Still a lot of discussion going on. It looks as if they're trying to sort out exactly what they're going to do with this call here. They had one guy punt the football, and then on top of that, they had penalties just before that. So I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do at this time, but I'm pretty sure right now 
the, refer the referees and head coach David Dean is trying to sort something out. And officials converge and again to talk things over. It'll be interesting to see who all gets ejected. Don't forget to watch VSU TV for the latest local, state, and national news on VSU TV News. Airing live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. or catch the rebroadcast at 6.30 p.m., 8 p.m., and 10.30 p.m. The Tigers' defense seems to be back out on the field, but the Blazers' offense is still on the sideline. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but it looks as if the Tigers are ready to play. Two different unsportsmanlike conduct calls on the same play, and that is the third play on this drive, Trey, where they've had multiple dead ball penalties called against them. And if you're going to attempt to get back in a the game, then penalties, you, you can't have them, even though I'm I'm going to go on a far limb here and say that this game just might be out of the reach of the Tigers, but then again, anything is possible. I mean, they make a lot of good plays on defense, and they can shut down the Blazers' sacking unit, then, hey, anything can happen. And so far, the Blazers' sacking unit hasn't done very well on the offensive side of the ball. At this point in the year, 0-9 for Edward Waters. You just got to think that possibly they're playing for some respect, but just not – not showing that, not executing that at all, as we've had multiple dead ball penalties, unsportsmanlike conduct, as the officials are still meeting on the field, discussing what's going on. Herb Reinhardt is still on the field. Just total confusion is going on on the field right now. Just and it looked as if the Play was about to start back out here on the field, but for some reason the refs have stopped it once again, and now I see the Blazers huddled back up as the Tigers are standing around just waiting to see what exactly what happens. I'd also noticed that Russ Callaway came back out on the field along with Eric Sledge and also Cameo Holloway, and it looks as if the Blazers were going to go ahead and try to punch it on into the end zone, but the refs have once again stopped the play, and and now we're just trying to wait to see. Okay, here we go. It looks like we're about to get right back to action here, Steve. And the official has blown the whistle to resume play. So after a huge delay, Russ Calloway is under center, first and goal for the Blazers. And handoff, and he'll plow in for the score. That's Eric Sledge, touchdown for Valdosta. And the fans like that after all the events. And more flags, more flags. I, I just don't know what to think of it. It seems like there's been flags thrown on every play this drive. And you got to wonder if this is going to be some kind of Orton Sportsman-like conduct on the Blazers responding to what the Tigers have been doing this whole entire drive with all their personal fouls and unsportsmanlike conduct. If not, it's another personal foul. I just can't say on who because it seems as if the flag came in well after the touchdown. So we'll go down to the sidelines. Let's see what the refs have to say about it. Yeah, the referee is looking as if this might be on the ball. Blazers, but they're ready to start walking backwards with it. So they both they were both dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, one on the Blazers and one on the Tigers. So they will offset and nothing will be addressed and point after is on the way. Snap the hold, the kick is up, and the kick is good. And with two minutes and 20 seconds left in the third quarter, it's 56 to six as we take a look at Eric Sledge getting in the end zone once again. And the route continues for the Blazers as they go up by 50 points here. And we're still in the third quarter, Trey. Yeah, we have two minutes and 20 seconds left here in the third, and it's 56 to six. That was a that was around about a four-play drive, and I'm gonna guess that it only, well, I'll say 90, I'll say about 90 yards before they got the touchdown. But once again, the Tigers didn't do the Blazers any favors. 
Well, they did do the Blazers a lot of favors, as a matter of fact, with all the penalties. They put the Blazers in scoring position. They put the ball down on the one-yard line for the Blazers, and they just handed it off to their power back, Eric Sledge, and let him take it on in, which he's done. That was the second touchdown today. Yeah, as we see, an 89-yard drive, but at least 30-plus of those yards came from penalties on the side of Edward Waters, aiding them. And, and once again, penalties playing a very big factor here today in the Blazers. Four plays in this Blazers yards. Just route. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only way you can really describe this, a route of the Tigers. Even though they're 0-9, they're they came out and looked as if they were ready to play, but then after a while, it seems as if everything just fell apart and the Blazers have been riding high ever since. Well, Daniel Anderson is getting his work in today as he will be kicking off again. And we've got Jonathan Hansen back alongside Quintavious Nelson to receive the kick. As Anderson sets the kick from right to left, and over to the near side, it will be it will be Quintavious Nelson as he comes back over to the near side across the 20 to about the 25. Drug out out of bounds at about the 25. And fans and players alike on the Tiger side are not happy. Thought might have been a late hit out of bounds, but no flag on the play. And that'll just add to the frustrations on the side of the Tigers. And as you can see here, he was taking the ball to the outside, and he's just trying to wait for his wall to be set up, but the Blazers were able to break through the wall and get in. And as you can see, he's still in the field of play before he slung down, but he was out of bounds when they threw him on the ground. So maybe the, the coaches and the fans here have an argument as far as there should have been a flag thrown in just there. That was Jackson Dean on the tackle as he took him out of bounds on the play. And it will be Cesare Wilburn in at the quarterback position as they'll make a late substitution. That'll be Javari Liggins coming in at the running back as Wilburn will be underneath, single set back, Liggins behind, two receivers to the far side, one to the two to the near, and he'll give it to Liggins as he goes through the initial line, gets up to about the 30-yard line before he's taken down, and that's going to bring up about second and five. The crowd has started to thin out here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium, as I think the fans have seen enough from scoring from the Blazers today as it's 56-6 to six with a minute 45 left to go in the third quarter. Wilburn in the shotgun formation, five receivers. Takes the snap, drops back pressure, gets hit as he throws it, and it'll be out of bounds. And that was number 93, Eddie Brown, on the pressure there as he delivered a lick just as Wilburn was passing the ball. And that's going to bring up third and about six. And it looks as if the Blazers are slowly trying to put the clamps back down on this Tigers offense. We have a minute and 33 seconds left here in the third quarter. It's third and six for the Tigers. Let's see what play they come up with to try to go ahead and move the chains and hopefully keep this drive alive. And with a minute 33 left, it's going to be third and six from their own 30. Shotgun formation, Wilburn takes the snap. Blitz coming from the weak side. Gets the pass off as he's hit. And that's his favorite target, Jonathan Hansen, who gets up to about the 40-yard line, and that will be enough for a first down as he got about 10 yards on the play. And so far, Johnson has been playing pretty good. As you can see here, Wilburn just immediately looks to Hansen to try to make sure he gets a pass off, and as you can see, nicely set the screen up, and he's able to make a couple defenders miss and stretches out for the first down. Yards after the catch played a big factor in that first down game as Wilburn is in the shotgun with five receivers set again. And two to the far side, three to the near. Takes the shotgun, drops, throws it over to the near side, and he's got his receiver and hit hard at about the 45. And that was number 14, Alex Webster, delivering the big hit on Samuel Charles. As we see right here, over the near side, good out pattern, perfectly timed, good catch. And then from the blind side, here comes Alex Webster as he lays the lick. On Charles there. I'm sure so Samuel be Charles will be five. feeling that one later. Five receivers again as Wilborn's in the shotgun. Second and five as we're winding down in the third quarter. Snap to Wilborn, takes back. He's going to heave it up long. He's got a receiver and broken up. And did he intercept? He did. That's number 24, Carlos Anderson. Tipped it to himself and picked it off. 
And just uh, once again, the Blazer defense coming up big as they've been doing all day, Trey. And I want to say this, Anderson's sixth interception on the season. As you can see here, here Anderson just sits back and waits for the ball to get to the wide receiver, and then he just matches the wide receiver's jump right there. He jumps up with him, and he's able to tip the ball out of the receiver's hands and into his own. Looks like the Blazers were in zone defense there, but the quarterback was not able to fit it in between the gaps from the zone, safe, or zone from the quarterback and the safety spot. And it was Anderson who was able to come up with the interception as Callaway is, will remain at the quarterback position. Three receivers, two to the far side, one to the near, takes the snap, hands it off. That's, that's uh, Ronnie Pow Donnie Powell, and he breaks across the 50 all the way down, close to the 45, and good run on the play, Donnie Powell, and Lorenzo Capehart on the tackle. And Powell just gets the handoff. And, and Powell is Powell. listed as a fullback here for the Blazers. As you can see, he's actually pretty quick. He's and he'll get the call again as he goes up the middle and plows forward for about five more yards. And it's going to bring up about second down and about three on the play. As he picked up about six or seven yards on the play, that's two back-to-back -back runs, good runs from the fullback, Donnie Powell, as will be at the end of the third quarter. And at the end of three, it's Blazers 56, Edward Waters 6. And we thank you for joining us here on BSU TV when we come back, start of the fourth quarter. Hi, I'm Major Samantha Weeks. I get to live my dream every day of being an Air Force fighter pilot and flying the most advanced aircraft in the world. Before I could ever climb into the Thunderbird S-16, I had to prove my flying skills through intense training, hard work, and determination. The road to my goal was long and challenging, but the reward is out of sight. You too can live your dream and accomplish anything when you set your mind to it. And welcome back to BSU TV's coverage of the game. We are at the start of the fourth quarter, and it's second and three as Russ Calloway hands it off to number 21, David Bailey. As he pushed forwards, makes a couple people miss, and he'll pick up the first down as he gets inside the 30, close to the 25-yard line. And I believe that's Bailey's first carry of the game. As he cuts to the right here, stops, makes a guy miss, cuts back, makes another guy miss. Third guy, and just keeps plowing forward as he moves the pile and picks up the first down. First and 10 from the 27 yard line. Callaway in the shotgun with Bailey to his right and Powell to his left, three receivers. Takes a snap, he'll give it to Bailey again as he sprints over to the left side, loses his feet. Might have got tripped up at the line of scrimmage by number 58, Emmanuel Pleasant. As he's brought down, gain of about one on the play. Call it second and nine. And it looks as if the Blazers are showing you every single running back that they have on this depth chart here. David Bailey, a, a freshman out of Brunswick, Georgia here, making us coming in in the fourth quarter and actually being very productive so far. He's been able to pick up the first down for the Blazers. Let's see how well he continues to play here in, this, in the end of this game. That's uh, Bailey and Powell on each side of Callaway. He's in the shotgun second down. Give it to Bailey as he goes behind Callaway on a sweep to the left. Flag thrown. Looks like it's going to be a holding and this one's going to come back as he's dragged out of bounds. And he picked up a good yardage, but it looks like it will come back on the play as number six, Rodriguez Owens, made the tackle, and he remains down on the sideline. But he's up and moving. It looks like he might be all right. So they're utilizing David Bailey here at this late in the third quarter to start here of the fourth quarter, trying to get him some rushes in there. And as we see, Bailey is the freshman. So as you noted earlier, they might be trying to get some new guys in there, young guys, get them some playing experience and set up for next year. And it was a holding call on the Blazers as it's gonna back them up to the 37 yard line, excuse me, the 33 yard line. And it's gonna be about second and 14 as Callaway's in the shotgun with Bailey to his right, two receivers to the near side, two to the far. And he'll take the snap looking, and he's going to give it to Bailey on a little running back screen, and he'll pick up about 10 yards on the play 
as he'll move inside the 20 yard line. Tackle made by number 46, Dan Burdett. Well, as you can see, Russ Calloway just is, is utilizing David David Bailey a lot here right now. He's getting him those hands off, and he's also hitting him on the little running back screen plays and everything. So I'm pretty sure David Dean is trying to see exactly how well this young man can play in an actual game time situation. Only a freshman, but getting substantial playing time here late in the game. Handed off to Powell. He gets nailed across the 20-yard line, picked up a couple extra yards. He's going to be just shy of the first down. Powell is another one of those seniors here on this Blazer, uh, Blazer team who's probably going to play his last collegiate game here today at Baysmore Hyder Stadium, but he's still coming in here at the end and trying to get his, the second unit a spark here at the end of the game and hopefully put a few more points on the board. Going out on a good note as he had that long run at the end of the third quarter. Fourth down, the offense will stay on the field. Fourth and a short as it's Bailey and Powell in the backfield again. Callaway will take it underneath and just do a quarterback sneak across the 15, and he will pick up the first down as the Blazers will move the chains once again. So far, Steve, as I'm going over the stats, I noticed that Kellen Lewis leads all rushers today with 100 yards. He's, he's, ran, it nine, he's ran the ball nine times and managed to get over 100, has 100 yards on the day and one touchdown. Just over 10 yards of carry he's averaging along with his 217 yards passing on the day. Galloway in the shotgun with Bailey and Powell. Give it to Bailey. He cuts, breaks off to the right side. Can't break the tackle at the line of scrimmage. He'll lose about a yard on the play. That'll bring up second down at about 11. One of the few times he's actually been stopped in the backfield. So pretty much every time he's touched the ball, good things have happened. He's been able to get positive yards for the offense, and I'm pretty sure David Dean is pretty, pretty happy to see what he's seeing out there on the field. As you said, the offensive line has been creating holes and gaps and providing protection for the quarterback all day. As Callaway's in the shotgun with three receivers set. And Powell to his right, Bailey to his left. And the shotgun takes it. And he's gonna and he threw it to Bailey again. But Bailey, I just didn't think I don't think he didn't get his head turned around quite soon enough as the ball went right by his head, incomplete. And it's gonna bring up third and about eleven. Well, it looked like what happened on that play to me was that Callaway had pressure coming off the, the left side of the line. It looks as if the, either the linebacker came completely free, no one even touched him, and Bailey was looking for the pass, but Callaway threw it a little bit behind, and he probably had a little trouble trying to adjust to it. And I'm sure Coach David Dean is showing a little respect as he's trying not to run up the score, just doing short passes and runs as he'll throw a little tunnel screen. But Jackson Dean, he breaks off a tackle and he will walk into the end zone for a touchdown. Jackson Dean and the Blazers just adding insult to injury here as we look like we have, might have a couple players down for the Tigers. And we'll just see here, Callaway hits Dean off a little tunnel screen, makes a guy miss, two guys miss. Oh. And then the third one comes across, can't make the tackle, and essentially walks into the end zone for the touchdown as they continue to run up the score. Snap the hole, the kick is up, and the kick is good. And with 11 minutes and 21 seconds left in the game, it's Valdosta State 63, Edward Waters 6. The VSU women's club soccer team is now recruiting. The soccer club will begin playing in the spring with an interesting meeting coming soon. Contact Christian Naismith, president, at cmnaismith at valdosta.edu. And Trey, we're not accustomed to seeing the Blazers run the ball all too much. They are a pass-heavy offense, but on that drive, they utilized their running backs good. Uh, Donnie Powell had a couple good runs, and David Bailey was utilized as well, and they were able to march down the field and put up their seventh scoring drive of the game. But, but that's the thing about this Blazer offense. They have a, a lot of talent in the running back position, and as you can see, they're bringing all of those players out today, and they're letting you see how athletic these guys are. I mean, you have the big power guys from David Arnold to I mean, and then Marcus Powell, who can run the ball very hard and very strong. Then you have the fast guys like Ronnie Nelson and Michael Brown. And as you see, the, the freshman Bailey here, who looks as if he has a little speed to him. And they're able to get the ball to the field effectively, as well as keep these guys fresh by cycling them all in and out of the game. And I said that was their seventh scoring of the drive. Excuse me, that's their ninth of the day. Ninth scoring drive on the day as they put up substantial numbers all day long and have had no trouble finding the end zone. 
And once again, Daniel Anderson, he's probably going to have to ice his leg after this game as he's kicking off once again the tenth time he's had to kick off. And it's Jonathan Hansen. And I'm pretty sure he'll rather ice it from doing too many kickoffs instead of kicking too many you know, field goals and <laughs> sending it back to the other team. And it will be Hansen on the kick as he switched over to the left side at the last minute to receive the kick. And he leaps over a defender and pushes forward past the 30. And he got up on that vertical a little bit as he was able to get past, move forward past the 30 yard line up to about the 33. As we see here, he switched spots with Quintavious Nelson, I guess, to receive the kickoff and then hurdles a guy right there. It looked like it might have been his own man. And then he just kept moving the pile past the 30. It's about the 33-yard line where the Tigers will take over on offense once again. And it looks as if the Blazers were once again just trying to script the ball out instead of trying to wrap up the, the, um, the returner and bringing him down. And it will be Cesare Wilburn back at the quarterback position in eye formation with three receivers. And he'll take the snap and hand off to his back. That's number 35 in the game now. That's Jared Linner. And that's his first carry of the game. And it's going to bring up about second and eight on the play as Wilburn looks the sideline for the play. And oh, Jonathan Hansen is lined up on the near side. That's been his favorite target all day. And they're on an offset eye with Leonard in the backfield. Snap to Wilburn, hands it off to him. Looks like it might have been a busted play as looked like Leonard wanted to go to the left and Wilburn was handing it off to the right. Nevertheless, they pick up a few yards on the play, and it's going to bring up about third and three, call it four. And if, and if Leonard wasn't able to move his feet the way he did on that play there, it looks as if he might have ran into the quarterback and got stuck in the backfield, and the Blazers would have been able to make a play and stop the play behind the line of scrimmage. Third and four from the 38-yard line with just under 10 minutes to go in the ball game. And he'll send his fullback in motion. And he'll drop back to pass Wilburn. Fires intercepted. That's number 11, Demarcus Flanagan, as he's still on his feet. Across the 25, down to the 20. Look at the big man go. All the way down to the 15-yard line. Demarcus Flanagan adding insult to injury as the Blazers will take over deep in the, in the red zone. And that is the third interception by this Blazer defense here today. And actually, it's, it's been a line, all defensive lineman, a linebacker, and a cornerback pick off the quarterbacks. So as you can see here, it looks as if they almost had Flanagan get down, but he was able to stay on his feet. Who knew Lyman had such balance? It's as if he's a running back out there. He's looking for the lanes, he's looking for his blockers, and he's still trying to pick up yards and put his offense in pretty good field position. If not, take the football in for a score of his own. Looks like Flanagan might be making an argument to Coach David Dean to put him in at running back for a couple plays in this game. We got a new quarterback. It's number 13, Austin Roberts, as he'll hand it off to Eric Sledge and needed to break one more tackle to walk into the end zone. But they tripped him up, and he gets down to about the five-yard line. It'll be, and he's very close to first down. It's about second and a foot. As Austin Roberts is getting some snaps now. Sophomore out of Lake Butler, Snap Florida. Snap to Sledge again up the middle. Broke a tackle and he's going to have the first down. It's going to be first and goal for the Blazers. As the Blazers are just trying to eat up some clock as much as they can. But being so close to the end zone, it's it's needless to say that that it's not they're not going to be able to eat up as much clock as they'd like. As they look to the sideline. Austin Roberts is a sophomore out of Lake Butler, Florida, Union County High School graduate. And he's getting some action here today. As he'll be lined up in the shotgun with Eric Sledge to his left and Donnie Powell to his right. And snap, give it to Ledge. And he carries a defender into the end zone. 
And that is the 10th touchdown, touchdown of the day Blazers. for the Blazers. And they look to go up 70 to six. As Sledge just takes the handoff, runs into his own guy, carries a defender as he's trying to hold onto his shirt and just plows into the end zone and picks up the touchdown. And once again, Anderson. the Blazers are showing you all their weapons at the halfback position and letting you know they refuse to be denied of the end zone when they get within the short yardage, a uh, short yardage opportunity here today. And with eight minutes and 36 seconds left, Foul off to St. 70, Edward Waters, six. And once again, the offense was given a short field to work with as it's been the story all game, Trey. And it was set up by an interception by DeMarcus Flanagan, who made a couple, couple nifty moves and made it all the way down to the 15 to set up the offense on first and 10. Blazers have set a team record here today with the quarter. points they put up. The, the, the last time the Blazers scored so how it was October the 9th, 1993, they put up 68 points versus Tarleton State. Today they put up 70 against this Tigers defense. So the Blazers here once again setting records at home in Bayesville, Ohio Stadium. 17 years since uh, off that offensive record has been set and has just been broken. And once again, Daniel Anderson getting his work in today, and he's on to kick off. And the only, one of the only bright spots for the Tigers today, Jonathan Hansen will be back to receive the kick as he's had a couple good returns already and a couple good catches to complement that. Anderson waits the kick. And they'll run up to the ball and kick it off. And this time it's going to be number 83, Quintavious Nelson, on the return as he costs, costs 20, gets hit and dropped immediately back on the 19. And that's where the Tigers will take over. First and 10. Number, and then on the tackle is number 35, Rico Mack. Getting in on the action today. Ball will be placed at the 20. Short progress gets it to the 20 yard line. First and 10, 8.30 to go in the ball game. As Terman will come back in at quarterback and lead the offense. Trey, they have not scored since that fumble Valdosta State had at their own goal line, and they were able to return it down the field into Valdosta territory and they were able to put a touchdown on the board. Since then, nothing. Blazers defense have stepped up and made stops all day as a late flag comes in from the back judge. And we might have too many men on the field. It's gonna be a delay of game on the offense. And that's gonna pack them up to the 15 and give them an even longer field to work with. First and 10, I formation, Turman underneath center. And the snap given to the back up the middle, nothing doing as he might have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. And we'll call it second and 15. As we might have a lineman limping off. Looks like he'll stay in. That was number 36, Titus Leakes on the run. As Turman will be in that. Shotgun formation, and he'll take the snap looking, gonna go over to his far side receiver. That's number four, Samuel Charles, and he breaks a couple tackles and gets thrown out of bounds. Once again, a late drag out of bounds by the Valdosta State defenders, but no flag on the play. Substantial gain on the play, so it'll be a first down for the Tigers. And that was number 20, Chris Bonica. He's a cornerback, he's a sophomore from Miami, Florida, uh, Southern Utah was his last school. He's out there trying to get a little game time experience. As, as, you, as I told you, David Dean's just going to all his 
his freshmen, sophomores, and juniors and trying to see how well these guys can play. So come next year, they'll be ready to have a little experience under their belt when they kick off the season. And it will be third and short. An I formation, this will give it to the back, and he'll plow forward past the 30, up to about the 35, and that's going to be enough for a first down on the play as that was Titus Leak getting the carry again. Correction, Jared Linear was the ball carrier. And it'll be first and 10 from the 35. Just over six minutes to go left in the ball game. 70 to six, belt off the state. Tigers on the move. As we'll get the handoff and go up the middle. Still not much there as the defensive line holds again. And it looks like Cedric Evans is in on defense now. He was a starting wide receiver today. And it looks like he's getting some snaps on defense. If it's not Cedric Evans, it must be another underclassman who's a number one and we don't have his name up here. We only see Cedric Evans listed as number one. But hey, we might have someone else. You know, you can have the same number on the team in college football as long as they don't play on the same side of the field. But you are. I formation. Give it to the back up the middle. Finds a little crease. Gets about one or two yards on the play. And that's about it. It's going to bring up about a third and five on the play. Of course, we know Cedric Evans was in was playing in place of Cedric Jones, a record-breaking receiver for Valdosta State, who we're still not sure why he did not dress today. But Trey hasn't hurt him at all. They've been able to move the ball and put up 70 points without their star receiver today. Well, when you have so much talent on the offensive side of the field as well as stars who can go out and turn the ball over on defense and get it back in the hands of the offense, you don't really need Cedric Jones right now. High snap. Gets it too tall for his receiver as it's incomplete as the intended target was Quintavious Nelson on the play, and that's going to bring up another punt. And that's going to put the Blazer offense back on the field with just over under five minutes to go in the ball game as number 12, Myron Donaldson, will be on the punt. And receiving the punt will be number 80, Chris Wellborn. And he's already muffed two punts today. We'll see how he handles this one as he'll be awaiting the kick. Fourth down, snap is good. He runs over to the right and kicks it. And it's a high, short, wobbling kick. And it'll land at the 35 and take a favorable Tiger bounce and roll to about the 30-yard line where the Blazers will take over first and 10. VSU Theater Department proudly presents Damn Yankees, based on the novel by Douglas Wallop. This musical follows Joe Boyd, who makes a deal with the devil, just so his favorite baseball team can win the pennant. Damn Yankees began on November 12th. Call the box office at 229-333-5973 to purchase tickets. And staying in at quarterback will be Austin Roberts, the six-foot sophomore out of Lake Butler, Florida. And lined up beside him will be number 21, David Bailey, who's been getting some hand, some carries late in this game. As we'll have four receivers as the Blazers will try and just run out the clock as they give it to Bailey. Sweep to the right side. Not much doing as the Tiger defense pursues and gets them behind the line. It's going to be a loss of about a yard on the play. Call it second and 11. And it looks as if the Blazers now are just trying to run the ball and go ahead and take this game on in and give the rest of this off to send the seniors off with a, a good farewell as they win 70 to 6 here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium and continue to entertain the crowd. Lost about three yards on the play. That will be a second and 13. Roberts in the shotgun. Hand off up the middle, a little confusion. He slips and falls as David Bailey got the snap and stumbled forward, gained about a yard on the play. And it's going to be third and long. As we're just under three minutes here in the fourth quarter, Blazers trying to wind down the clock and put a cap on the season here as they lead 70 to 6. Long day for the Tiger defense as they've been on the field a lot. Blazers have put up substantial numbers all day and give it to Bailey running around the outside. 
and he'll stay on his feet and get across the 30, but not much more. It's going to bring up a punting situation. So far, I must nine. say, I've been impressed by what I've seen from the Blazers' second and third unit out here on the field. It looks as if the Blazers have a, a lot of bright spots and a lot of potential on both sides of the, on the, of the field when it comes to rebuilding this team for next year. Jack Fulford on the punt. We haven't called his name too much today. And Jonathan Hansen will be back to receive the punt. Fourth and nine from the 31 yard line. Snap is good. Someone broke in and almost blocked the punt, almost hit the kicker, but stayed away as Hansen picks it up at the last minute. And he's going to be wrapped up by a slew of defenders. And a late flag comes in, might have a face mask. That'll move the Tigers up, up the field. We'll have to check the call. The Tiger defender broke in and almost blocked the punt, but Fulford was able to get it off. And we'll check the flag. Back, face mask on number 31, Ryan Smith. And that's going to move the ball up to the 43-yard line. Sharpen your skills and have some fun. Combat Laser Tag is coming to the front lawn. Come out on Wednesday, November 11th from 8 to 11 p.m. and enjoy a free laser tag with an added edge. And we have turned it back in at quarterback as we'll be lined up in the I formation. Three receivers, two to the far side, one to the near. Bobbled snap, hands it off, and we he's met in the backfield by number 11, Demarcus Flanagan, as he just broke through the line of scrimmage and put a pretty good lick on the running back and brought him down behind the line of scrimmage. Call it second and 11. Not much doing on the ground all day for the Tigers. As about also say defense, as we said numerous times, has been able to come up and make big plays all day long. And Turman's underneath in the eye formation. As the clock is winding down under a minute to go. And he bobbles the snap and he's just gonna fall on it. And it looks like that's going to be pretty much the end of the game right there. But once again, the Blazers completely dominated this game. They had 30 first downs to the Tigers' 13. The Blazers, what, 40, 40 plays, 265 yards, where the Tigers only had 35 plays for 70 yards. The only thing that went in favor of the Tigers today, the Tigers actually held the ball for 31 minutes and 41 seconds to the Blazers, 26 minutes and 44 seconds. But other than that, the Blazers were in the red zone nine times and eight of those nine times they got touchdowns and the Tigers were in the red zone twice. At least they went 50% they were one for two in the red zone but thank you for joining us here at Baysmore High Stadium where the final score is 70 to 6 and thanks for joining us here on VSU TV. See you the next time.